Football, football Show. Hopefully you're having an incredible day today. This is episode 21. My name is Alex Light with Sparky3. Joining with me, as always, I got Tyler in here in the studio, but I also got Shane back this week. Shane, how you doing? How you feeling? You battled COVID, came out on the other side. How you feeling, man? Tired. You kicked but, your ass um, a little bit? Yeah, COVID really kicked my ass. Um, no joke, man. It's uh, re- really like my first time really like getting it. Right. And the worst part about it is like the, the body fatigue oh, and like yeah, the cold boy. sweats. Facts. Yeah, because that's what you had, right, Tyler? Yeah. The yeah, co- migraine for like two weeks straight. Yeah. Sucked. I didn't. I had a headache, uh, but I was um, I was told that I wasn't supposed to, <laughs> but I was sitting there fucking popping ibuprofen every right, like right. six hours. <laughs> right. But um, well, I'm glad you made it out on the other side. But yeah, them cold sweats and ain't no joke, dude. Oh, I don't doubt it. I'm talking, I had like six layers of clothes, <laughs> two covers, and I was still like, like, like I was in the Antarctic, bro. It right. was, it was tough. Yeah, Tyler, how are you feeling today? Ah, huh? pretty dandy. A little tired, but it is I, what it is. I, I understand that. I understand that. I thought it was gonna be cold outside when I walked out. And it was like seventy. Yeah, it, same. It feels nice out. It feels nice out right now. I will say one thing. I, I listened. I was, I'm, you know, I wasn't here last week, so I listened to the pod. And um, I do feel less dominant now that I'm not in the, on the desk there, Tyler. <laughs> yeah, you, can't, you can't touch anything, you know? You're just out there chilling with your I legs le- by I your kneecap. I feel, I feel less powerful. It's all right, Shane. We've got a, we do have a new studio on the way. We do have a new studio on the way. You're getting it delivered. Yeah, it's getting delivered. U- UPS, FedEx? You know you love FedEx. Fuck FedEx, bro. <laughs> I hate FedEx, bro. They are garbage. At least for me, they are. I have the worst luck with them. But no, we do got a new studio on the way, and one of the, my goals for the new studio is I want to make it where like the the person that's not at the computer or the host desk also has a desk. So we got stuff in the works. <laughs> so Tyler, you can stop complaining yeah. about the couch. I like, to touch, I like to touch things, you know. Whatever, dude. Just chill. Well, I will say though, the the couch is much more comfortable. Right that now. is true. Those, just, able, these chairs are not comfortable. I'm just able to kind of like re, like lean back, relax. Yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah. like I want to take a nap sitting over there. Right, right. Over here, I'm just like, damn, my back pains, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, first and foremost, uh, of course, we've mentioned this before. We did launch a website, sparky3.com. Make sure you go show us some support there. You can sign up to the website for free, or you can sign up for $5 a month for the premium tier. Get extra perks, including early podcast episodes. Uh, but if you sign up for free, you can definitely go check out some mock drafts, player rankings from us, because these two boys have actually already put out their first uh, mock drafts. Shout out to that. Version 1s for Tyler and Shane is out. I'm currently working on mine. It should be out this week. Uh, I'm about probably like 13 picks in right now. I'm still doing some research and doing some digging, but it's on its way. But yeah, sparky3.com, as well as you can go check out the merch store, sparky3shop.com. And uh, we also have our official Discord server. That's going to be linked down below as well. You can go follow us at Twitter at TerribleFBShow, as well as check out the other shows like Game Aesthetic. Uh, Anime and Plus, though, it will be on a little bit of a hiatus. Uh, it will be on a hiatus for a few weeks um, while I sort out some personal issues. Uh, for this show, I'm, I'm still going to do this episode in the next week. Uh, and then we're going to be on a, on a break, which we'll detail more about that here soon. But uh, Game Static, I'm also taking a step away as well. Uh, Zach, and, uh, Zach and John are going to be holding it down. Uh, and we also talk about movies and stuff whenever we get a new episode for that out. That, that just comes out when it comes out. You see the, but speaking of that, uh, you see the leaks of Multiverse Madness? Uh, no, I haven't. I haven't seen anything for that. Someone leaked, uh, just like they did with No Way at Home, the cast of um, like a movie theater. You know how you can go in there and buy tickets or whatever, and it shows you like the cast under like the main picture, like right, the right. main poster, and it shows the entire cast. Mm, spicy. I want you to tell me, but I don't want you to tell me now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll probably do it after the show. Yeah, t- do it after the like, show. People, you know, like, be, be respectful. You I don't want to get beat up on the internet. For yeah. Spoilers, so. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Uh, well, let's go ahead and kick things off with this, uh, Shane. Since you were out last week battling COVID in the trenches, what are your thoughts on the Washington Commanders? I don't like it. I, don't I, I mean, as as you know, I was really cheering for Red Hogs. Um, not only because of the history from that team being called the Hogs and the Pig Pen and things like that, but I was actually looking at their roster. They have like five or six Razorbacks on their current roster. Right. So it would have been nice seeing those guys transition, you know, being in the pros to being a Hog again. And like I said... I mean, of course, they're not going to look at Arkansas and be like, "Oh yeah, we're going we we care about them and their fans," because they don't. But um, like I stated, you know, 
two weeks ago or whatever, they could have they could could have gained at least over half of a state full of yeah. fans. Yeah, just based off of a name change, <coughs> and of course more fans, more revenue because they're buying jerseys, they're buying you know th- things like that. And honestly, DC is like what fifteen hours some of that from here. Mm-hmm. So hey, Razorback fans have traveled lo- farther than than that for games. So, so I mean, who knows? Um, as far as the uniforms go, I kind of agree with Tyler. I like, well, actually, no, I disagree. I like the all white jerseys the best. Um, I'm sure they'll mix match them. They're not going to do every game all maroon or all white or all black. Mm -hmm. Um, but I really like the aesthetics from the all white jerseys. Um, I really agree with you with the, with the main, I don't like the, they put, was it Commanders? Yeah, on the, the Commanders on the home jersey. I think it would have looked better if it was Washington. Yeah, I would have just liked the Washington on there. Um, I like I like the the style of the lettering. I don't know what it what it what what about it kind of like mm-hmm. brought my eye to it, but I really did like the style of the lettering, like the Washington on there. And I'm with Tyler as well. That that logo. That established nineteen whatever whatever the soccer logo, style the, the one soccer, the soccer style logo oh that is, is pretty sick. It's See, pretty I, I don't sick. really care for it just because, like I said in, in last week, I'm not a big soccer fan, so it doesn't it doesn't ring a lot to me. It's just like oh, whatever. Not gonna lie, that helmet's pretty nice though. See, I like like I said though, I actually don't mind. I don't I don't mind the I like the W, but then again, that's like my style of a design. Like I mean, I like the last W they had too, but I I do like that W though. Oh. I, that W on the front of the black helmet though, that bothers the shit out of me, dude. It's like a, a you know, like the the senior ball when they yeah, have yeah. all stickers everywhere. Yeah. That's what that reminds me. Yeah, of. I re- that's the only reason why I really don't like the the all black is because of that W. The but W on the the burgundy helmet though, that does look clean. Yes. I like the little. The little logo the, right there. Yeah, the little commander's patch. And, like, even the numbers, like, you see the numbers on the white jersey, how it kind of fades, like, yeah, yeah. white and red. Like like, a, like the Falcons, kind of? Like yeah, a, yeah I like really, gradient. And, on, and honestly, the maroon that they went with is a little bit darker, it seems like, than what the the two previous teams were. And it goes really well. It seems like they brightened up the yellow yellow a little bit to make it pop. I really like the color scheme. I really like what they did with the jerseys. Um... But overall, I'm going to have to give it, like, a six as far as, like, total. See, that's pretty sick. I don't know if that's a real or a I don't think concept. that's real. It's, no, it's that's probably just a concept. Okay. But, yeah that, that, yeah, that one, the soccer one, yeah. Yeah, I really like that. They need to put they need to put that on the black uniform. It has, the, been sick. It has the champions teams, too, though. That's what I like about it, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I mean that that is a, that is a pretty sick logo. I mean, uh, you know, I'm just not a big soccer fan. That's why it doesn't like ring to me as quickly as it does you guys. That's clean too, right? Oh there. yeah, that's yeah, on that, that that's on clean. the black one. Okay, yeah. it's on the, it's on the shoulders, it's on the sleeves. All right, but um, I think overall I give it like a six, six and a half. Maybe I can push it to probably a seven, seven and a half. Like once I actually see them, like maybe in Madden or like on the field, right? Um, but just looking at it through Twitter and and things like that. You know, I can look past the jerseys and stuff like that if we would have had a better name. I just don't care for the name. I really don't. Yeah. I get it, though. I do like it better than the Admirals or the, yeah, the, Sen- Admirals. Or the, or the Senators or whatever they it was. Or, right. Um. So, I mean, out of those, I like it. I like the Commanders the best because, like you stated last week, um, you know, it is – for and it is Washington. We do have all of our high command, yeah, and all of like higher up military people are there. Um, so it does make sense in in, in a general aspect. But <clears throat> I think as far as football wise, I just thought Red Hogs. I mean, you both agreed that Red Hogs just would have. It has made sense, made sense because of the fan base, the history. <clears throat> so yeah, it's, it's looking like Arizona State. It does now that you like, pull up there, the Arizona State's alternates there. Like everything about it, the alternate, the white, the color, like that stone cold looks like. Except for that, the pants, only thing that changes is the they did a maroon helmet instead of the, the yellow. Yeah, and that in the pants as well. I don't know which which I think they'll end up doing something like that. They're yeah, not they they're will. not going to do the all same color. Um, they'll yeah they'll, they'll do yeah, like they're uh, not going to organ it, you know. Yeah, uh, looking no. like a highlighter. No, 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 no. <laughs> they're they're gonna do like maroon shirt, white pants. You know, they're gonna do their classic stuff. Right. 
Well, let's hop over to some other stuff. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, you guys have your first mocks out. Uh, we're entering draft season. We're going to start detailing that here after the Super Bowl, so look forward to that. But in the meantime, like I said, you can sign up to the website, sparky3.com, to view these two boys' as mocks, uh, and mine will come out soon as well. Um, we can start with some college topics real quick, and then we'll hit uh, Super Bowl, of course. It's this Super Bowl week. You know, one day, hey, dream big, shoot for the stars. We'll be there and uh, Super Bowl, you know, Super Bowl row, whatever. You know, we'll be there. Got to shoot big, boys. But in the meantime, we'll chill in our studio and talk about the game, talk about what we uh, got to look forward to. But let's start a little bit of college stuff, though. Uh, Tyler, you sent this over to us uh, with Arch Manning. Or is it, did you send it, Shane? Which one have you sent? I think you sent it. Yeah, okay. I sent it. Uh, Arch Manning's top four schools, Georgia, Texas, Alabama, and Ole Miss. Uh, what do you guys feel? How are you guys feeling on that? I feel like Texas is out just because Quinn Ewings is going. I, I feel like Texas, there's no chance in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I th- I feel like there is a chance with Texas, but they are in the bottom of my list. I'd say Georgia is the top, I think. I think it's yeah. Georgia, um, Georgia, Alabama is his, probably his top two, only because of – there's been some rumors with Lane Kiffin and his coaching staff right. on how they do things, and I think Art just is a type of guy to n- stay away from any kind of drama. Right. And out of those teams, Georgia, Alabama, you know what they are. They're not going to get at you into some scandalous situation. Right, right. So if I was to pick right now, it's probably Georgia. Georgia would be yeah. is my pick personally. It's the one that makes the most sense in my mind. Um. When 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 is he set to make any sort of now? Because he's class of twenty three, right? Yeah, twenty three. All right, so we got a little while for her before he actually decides, unless he wants to pull the trigger early. Um, I mean, Clemson's in his top five, but they so just, basically number five. Yeah, but they just got the number one quarterback from mm-hmm. twenty two, so or number two. I don't know what he is. He's up there though, right? Up there at the top, kind of like uh, you know Malachi Nelson at the top, and now. He's got Caleb Williams coming to USC. <laughs> that, that that sucks for him. I I think it's funny. I, I mean I don't I don't know. I mean Caleb Williams he'll probably be out of the out of college pretty quickly. You know what I mean? He'll probably play like in maybe a year or two tops and go to the pros or get mad and transfer. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean Malachi will probably get redshirted his first year anyway. Uh, and then, you know, Caleb do his thing and then be basically a freshman red shirt next year. Caleb do his last year probably and go to the pros. And then Malachi's time is going to be there at USC. But, I, f- I mean, I feel like uh, USC, do they're about to run the Pac-12. I do. Yeah. No disrespect to your second team there, Oregon. But I, with Caleb Williams coming there, Lincoln Riley and that staff, and, dude, I, I think I think USC's back, man. I think they're about to run it. I think it definitely makes things more interesting. It, oh, now that is 100% true. It makes things more interesting on that side of the country. Because, really, it was like Oregon and Utah. Yeah, that's know, it. Here and there. Oregon's, of course, been the most consistent. Utah's been kind of there off and on, depending on what the season. They're just the good team from the other division. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, as much as I hate USC and I don't want to see them succeed. <clears throat> you know they're about to. <laughs> I will admit, football is better when USC is good. That is true. Big facts. Yeah, that is true. Um, Just like, you know, football is better when Texas is good. I will yeah, agree yeah. with that. Yeah, it um, is. Even though, again, I don't want to see them winning. Right. Um, Especially when they come to the SEC, you know. Yeah. Like, you can hate Texas, but just seeing them, like, suck just in football just kind of makes you hurt a little bit. Yeah. 100%. Th- them Charlie Strong teams were rough to look uh, at. They were. <laughs> Which was surprising. I'm a big Charlie Strong fan. I'm surprised he bumped Bombed. so hard. Yeah. yeah. Y'all see Jimbo, though? Did y'all watch the video? I, I saw that clip, yeah. He, he's no, heated. He he's went heated. Off. Yeah, he's heated. About all the talk of everyone's just like, oh, Texas A&M's recruiting budget was like twenty to thirty million to buy all these kids because, like, dude, their recruiting class is stupid. Man. I mean, yeah, I mean, he, it's arguably up. the best recruiting class and like ever. I mean, he has. I don't think he has anybody outside of the top three at their position. Like, bro, that recruiting class is dumb. I mean, I'm pretty sure he has more more five star recruits than Vanderbilt's ever had. Just in this class. Yeah, he's got yeah. four or five star recruits. That's stupid, dude. And even the four star recruits are still like number two or number yeah. three in their class, like in their at their position. Yeah, dude. Like they're so high. Like I mean, there here's a four star recruit tight end. He's the number one position, uh, number eighth in the state. Uh, he's from Georgia. If that makes sense. Uh, this safety here, four star. He's uh, the eighth ranked position, twelfth in the state. Uh, this D lineman tenth for the position, number one in the state. Um, 
man, it's just stupid. I mean, like looking at his top recruits, his five stars, number two position, number four in the state, national number 11, national 16, position four, state two, national 22, position two, state five, and national 23, position four, state six. But watch, Texas A&M, for all you Aggie fans out there. For all three of you. Texas A&M is still going to be Texas A&M. Yeah. (laughs) They're still going to have all this talent, spending all this money, through their boosters or however they're paying these players with the NIL deals just to go, what, eight and four? <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> Maybe Shane not. Is firing some, <laughs> Shane's firing some shots at Texas A&M right now. So you can have all the class that you want. You can have all the five-star players that you want. But at the end of the day, you're still going to go eight and four. You're still going to lose to the likes of Alabama, Georgia. And Arkansas. Hey, for right now – you can't say so. I mean, you can't. I mean, you can say so because we beat them last year. But I'm not going to say Arkansas consistently right now because I just don't think that we're there. Of course, Texas A&M is going to have better talent than us, but we did kind of beat their ass this year, you know. But um, at the end of the day, you still have to go through Georgia, Alabama, and who knows? I mean, Florida always has talent. They're always going to be up there. I know they weren't there this year, but they're always somebody somebody to, to be reckoned with. LSU is going to be up there, even though how cringy Brian Kelly is. <laughs> that so, that <laughs> video, oh my Damn. god! And then the recruit turns around, and recruits Alabama. Yeah, he's Damn. like, I didn't want this old man grinding on me, dude. I'm out of here. But I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, <laughs> they're, go, they're they're getting all these these high class recruits, yay for Jimbo, but. They're going to go 8-4, and 9-3. and three. They're not going to contend for the West, and then half their recruits will be gone next year. Have you seen their schedule? Look at this. Look, look at the easy games they got on there. Look at Is that U- Sam Houston? Yeah. yeah, that's Sam Houston. They got Sam Houston. App State. First game of the year. App Miami. State, Miami. Yeah, I know Miami's – I know yeah. we're playing them this year. Then you got Arkansas. Because the Miami game's <laughs> in Texas, right? Yep. I was thinking about trying to go to that game. That would be pretty solid. South Carolina, which South Carolina, want, they're they're going to be a team to watch out for in the East. Yeah, with Spencer. With Spencer and that tight end. They've got some decent recruits. I forgot who their coach is, but he's doing a great job. Over uh, there. Beamer. Beamer, yeah. Yeah. The, the, uh, the son of – The mayonnaise. Yeah, the mayonnaise. And he's <laughs> the son of uh, the other Beamer. Frank. The one, yeah, Frank Beamer, who was yeah. a uh, VT yep. for all those years. Um, yeah, they got some solid Auburn, Auburn is going to be abysmal. That's gonna um, be easy, that man. whole program is falling apart right now. Yeah, we're about to talk about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I mean, let's hey, see here. You calling the upset? The minute men? I'm calling up. If anything, you Southern, <laughs> I mean, Sam Houston's going to fucking <laughs> be the man. one. Hey, minute has got, you know, Adam Vinatieri's son, bro. Hey, that's, that's Pay, solid, pay them bro. some respect. <laughs> he could have gone to LSU. He could have went to Indiana and stayed up there with Pat. Yeah, yeah, I think it was funny to see all of the places he was considering going because LSU was the most random. Right. Because he was considering going to South Dakota State, I think is where his dad went, or did his dad go to South Dakota? It's one of the two. I think it was South Dakota State. Yeah, South Dakota State. So he was considering that Indiana, where his dad played and lived for the Colts, UMass, where his dad played and lived for the Patriots, and then out of nowhere, it's just like, LSU. <laughs> it's like, all right, bro, whatever, man. <laughs> I mean, but I'm, I'm serious. Like, don't. Don't be surprised if come come September or whenever that Sam Houston game is in Sam Houston. No, I'm I'm not saying that they're guaranteed to win, but they're going to put up a fight. Hey man, they're coming up to D one. Uh, this Arkansas schedule though, can we talk about the? This is the like the four straight year they have had the hardest schedule. Yep. Like you, yeah, I know Shane talks about that a lot. Like you start out with Cincy. Yeah. And then you got South Carolina, which they're could, not they're not going to be a push around. And then you got. Uh, Missouri State with Bobby Petrino. That's that's going to be interesting right there. Is that at Fayetteville? Yep. Yeah, it's in Fayetteville. Oh, yeah, yeah well, naturally, it's Missouri State. It's, Sorry, uh, I don't uh, even know why I asked that question. Other, that's a dumb fucking question. Other than Bobby Petrino coming to, like, UCA to play or whatever, it'll be his first time in Fayetteville since he was fired. That's going to be wild. That's going to be something right there. But then you Shane, got, you going to go to that game? Yes. <laughs> I am. It's... Same same time as uh Miami and Texas A and M, same exact day. So there you go. So while you while you, while you be up in Fayetteville potentially, I'm gonna be down in Texas potentially. <laughs> I, I need to look where Penn State's at. So <laughs> see what's funny is <laughs> yeah, what, see what, what see who they're playing see that what's weekend. Funny is that 
I'll probably be in Texas at next week to watch the A&M game. See, the boots on the ground. We got to get boots on the ground at these games, boys. <laughs> that, that BYU game is going to be something, though. I will 100% do a talk and walk. This man said talk and walk. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I can't. I, I don't want Trey Biddy coming after me, okay? Hold on. Where's my team? There we go. Oh, my God. Fuck off. <laughs> hey, I just got to see. What can they're... you can you just go ahead and say to the world that you've officially ban- abandoned Arkansas State as your second favorite team and officially acknowledge the Cowboys as your number two team? They're, they're up there. Change it on the graphic. It's official. I, I'm changing <laughs> it on the graphic, bro. Hey, like they come out the gate at at uh, Burt's Illinois squad. Whatever, man. But September they are off September 17th. So let's go look at. <laughs> I, I'm changing on the graphic. Wyoming Cowboys and, is Tyler's new second see, favorite college and, team. And see what's funny is that he checked Wyoming before Penn State. I know. See, that's the thing, guys. I mean, I'm telling you, Wyoming, like, I'm convinced that oh, Arkansas shit. State is not your second. Oh, shit. September 17th, Auburn at Auburn. Uh, we got we got boots on the ground that weekend, boys. All three teams, <laughs> we got boots on the ground. <laughs> Man. Oh, shit. We played the Chippewas. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. We, you're a Mac we, Attack fan. We get a Ohio Mac. You and your Mac attack, bro. Central Michigan, Mac. Uh, that's it. That's all the Max we got. We got two, two of the three of the Mac attacks. The Max, the Max, and the SEC. Well, still talk about Auburn there. You just mentioned him. Auburn's a shit show right now with everything going on with uh, Brian Harson. Uh, you know, now fired, which I didn't actually see that. But I then again, I have been so disconnected from the news. But I mean, that's I mean, it's with everything that's been popping out, man. It's uh, this all kind of came out of nowhere. It feels like. Yeah, I mean, there mm-hmm. was there was things going on. What's today? Today's Tuesday. So yeah. I mean, there there was some murmurs and stuff come like late Friday, Saturday, um, and then it kind of went silent Sunday, and then there were some murmurs again like late Monday. And then I think he was fired early. Or maybe most likely to be fired. Yeah, I'm looking at it now. It looks like he's most likely to be fired. Okay. Two well, hours I mean, ago. I saw that. When was that? Two hours ago. They're trying to figure okay. out the $18 million buyout. Yeah, it, 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 it was, it's going to end apparently in, in a couple of ways, and it's going to end very quickly apparently. And what by the my, by people I've been I've been listening to that are – Auburn fans, or they cover Auburn, um, they saying that he's not going to be the only one gone. That yeah. AD's probably gone as well. So, like I said, Auburn enters a Chad Morris era, and I love every second of it. I love it. Penn State's going to go out there, go to Auburn, fifty six oh one. Oh, please do, please. Hey, look at this Auburn schedule real quick. They can potentially start out. They could lose the Mercer. In week one. All right, let's go ahead and pump the brakes here. Okay, let's let's not get ahead of ourselves. They'll they'll probably beat Mercy. Okay, probably not. But San Jose, Nick Stark still there? No, no. Nope. Okay, Javon, Javon's there. Okay, some Hawaii. So, so San Jose's gonna beat Auburn. Penn State gonna beat Auburn. They are gonna start. I guess I guess I'll give them that. They're one gonna start line. two and two because the, the, the Missouri is abysmal too. So true. Okay, two and two. Could lose Where, the where's Could. the where's the next W? Uh, looking at it from here, so they're going to start two and two potentially. LSU, so I'll be two and three. Georgia, two and four. Ole Miss. Mm. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Is that is that Western Kentucky? That that is Western. That Kentucky. might be a win. Maybe. Yeah, they got Zappy. So watch us say this, and then Auburn just like fucking figures it out. So <laughs> that'd be. Yeah. <laughs> Auburn guy, what was the quarterback? Who'd they get? <clears throat> they got Dart, didn't they? Was it Dart or was that Ole Miss that got Dart? No, I thought I thought Auburn got Dart. Don't look at me. This man said, "Don't look at me." Uh, <laughs> let me. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, Auburn's in a Auburn's in a tough spot, especially like this late in the game, dude. For you to get rid of your coach and have to quickly figure out a new coach, because that's what I was saying about the Hawaii thing. Is like with everything that was happening with uh, Todd Graham, dude. It was so late in the game to try to hire, you know. Where it's just like, wh- who's going to be your candidates at this point? You know, because you're so close to the point where you got to get recruiting done and shit. Which, you know, at this point, our, you know, the recruiting should pretty much be done anyway as at this point. But Texas ain't no quarterback. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, that's right. Or Calavari or whatever his name is. But I mean, Cal- losing losing Cal- your coach Cal- at this point in the game, dude, that's tough. That's tough. 
you know, we're, and, we're and not, not far all, away from Springsteen. And not stuff. only that, um, like I said, losing AD as well. Yeah. Um, so there's been rumors saying that, I don't know if it's rumors or it's just Auburn fans, you know, saying what they want. But I was on Twitter and I've seen some some Auburn fans say that they want, like, Joe Judge as their coach. They need to look at uh, Bill O'Brien. That's true. That is, okay, that that's – that's true. That'd be that'd be quite the hire going from Bama to Auburn. Because <laughs> if because if he gets his quarterback, he's a good coach. But yeah, yeah. Other than that, he ain't shit. Yeah, no. That that's actually a candidate to watch for. I could actually see that one happening personally. Yeah, I could too. All right, let's hop over to some pro talk. You know, this is of course being Super Bowl week, big week, boys, big week, big week. Are yeah. we planning anything for s- Sunday? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, even even if I'm in town, I don't know what you got planned, but I don't have. I I doubt I'm going to get invited to any Super Bowl parties this year. So I that mean, that is that was so sad. I know <laughs> to say, Man. but um, so I, I, mean, I probably if you're won't do something here. I probably wasn't going to do anything, which obviously you know why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, you know, if it wasn't for that, I was gonna. Pro- we we might have done something, but I mean, if you guys wanted to do something, like if you guys want to come over and use the studio, you're more than welcome to. I just don't know if I'll partake, but. I got you. Yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. We'll, t- we'll tweet it out at a terrible FB show as well as our own respective Twitters. We'll figure something out if we want to do anything. I probably won't. Um, I don't know. We'll see. I've got a very, very busy next few days. Oh, I bet. So, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Um, but let, let's kick things off, though. We had the Pro Bowl this past week. And, man, Pro Bowl is an absolute joke. I mean, it is. It has been for years. Uh, what would you guys do to change it? You know, it, we, I mean, we, uh, a lot of people say just get rid of it. I don't know how, if I would say get rid of no. it. Because it, it is an important honor, you know, that people look at when it look, talk about Hall of Famers and players and stuff. But, I don't know, maybe something can be changed about it. And I'm not going to sit here and, and I'm not going to push the narrative that I think it needs to be changed where it's going to really put these players to want to be a lot more physical like it used to be, you know. Because you do have that rare situation like Ty uh, Effort who got hurt in the Pro Bowl you know, and then missed, like, the first eight games of the regular season because of it. You know, th- those those do happen. But, I don't know, maybe there can be something to do to fix the Pro Bowl where you still have it and it can still be – because at the end of the day, all the Pro Bowl is meant to be fun. I mean, it's, yeah, you know, don't take this, it serious. This is what this is what I'm, I'm stating, right? I think um, you should play 11-11, right, no pads, and treat it like a 7-on-7 on, like seven seven style to where – um, you know, I mean, it's kind of sucks for kickers and punters, but yeah, <laughs> you, you kind of start on the pat ain't gonna like you. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> Sorry, Pat, if you ever find this, <laughs> I, I, the brand, the you're brand, be, you're gonna be on the show <laughs> Friday morning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Heck, in, the, in that case, uh, fuck the kickers, uh, <laughs> get me on the show. Um, but I mean, they could do, they could easily do eleven eleven type thing but treat it like a seven on seven to where you know it's no pads no nothing they could have a flag or they could just do their touch or whatever they've been doing i know typically on seven on seven they do just touch um which i mean they haven't even been touching each other like yeah. somebody gets around you and you're like, oh, well you're down yeah um <laughs> i mean I, I think that's all fine and dandy because i think that'll kind of give kind of like that backyard feel um that sometimes you know players and the pros kind of lose that 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 kind of like backyard feel when it comes to football because I mean it's their job. So I think that'd be a nice um and plus you're not giving expectations of the pro bowl of being full contact. Cuz the biggest thing the biggest surprise for me was when I tuned in I'm like okay they're all suited up, they're in pads, they're, they're in full uniform and they're over there like tapping each other's butts to get down. So it's like Okay, well, I expect this because they're in full gear, um, but that's not what we got. So, you know, they, maybe they can wear their helmets, um, you know, for the team that they're with, come up with some kind of uniform that's, you know, like seven-on-seven-like, um, and then do it that way, but play 11-on-11. Um, and then as far as, like, an extra football game to watch, I've been seeing this for years, Um Put the two worst teams together, yeah, and have them play for the number one pick. A lot of people still pitch that personally. Uh, with the pick situation, I think they should do the 
the lottery like the NBA. So you can't really tank. Uh, no, I I hate the lottery. I really do. That's me, though. I, mean, I, I might be on an island with that. I think the lottery is stupid. I mean, I'm a Sacramento Kings fan. I can't really hate something that we try to finesse the, every the only thing, The only thing I don't like about the lottery, I don't always trust it. Yeah, right. Like, like Cleveland getting three or four years, number ones. That's yeah, because I mean, it's as much as people say, "Oh no, they do it right." I mean, it's not that hard to dap on somebody's pocket, right? And um, you know, put something on it on a on a fucking envelope to where you can tell which one it is. That's the only thing I don't like about it because it comes. I mean, that's outside of football or basketball that's that's providing that pick. And I just that's something I've never my, been a fan of. My so. thing is they use balls, right? But they don't just use one for each team. I feel like it should be one for each team, not a percentage of the balls for the worst team. I say give you the top five, top six. Just put one ball in, whichever one comes out first. That's pick six and all the way down to one. That's what I would do. Draw out of a hat, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, I I, I like that better because I just I just don't like. I mean, if we're gonna do it, then you gotta do it fair for however many teams you're gonna do it for, whether it's fourteen like the NBA or however the NFL would do it. I say the worst in every division. Yeah, I mean, oh well, no, because some divisions are pretty solid, and some's got some two trash teams like the Jets and yeah, Miami truth. a couple of years ago. I don't know. I don't know if there's a way to solve that, but. I will say for the Pro Bowl one other idea, and it would it would ultimately fuck out of all the positions to go. The only one that I think that it would actually fuck would be like your kick returner, punt returner, uh, Pro Bowl selection, your uh, and your punter. I feel like kickers will still get and long snappers still kind of get their action, but uh, play on a reduced field, man. Like just make it short, like, like an arena. Yeah, play on, play on like a. I mean, you can play on a full length field, but it's like cut where you start the field. Think of it like college overtime. You know, keep it keep it close to the red zone. Keep it one, exciting. One play. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think it might be a little fun. Cause, I mean, like at the end of the day, people like I get, everyone that bitches about the Pro Bowl is just because like they're taking it super serious. Because you know, it's you know they're thinking it's going to be like a playoff level game, but like it's just dudes out there having fun. Cause, you know, it's cause, like the NBA All Star game. Yeah, I mean, well, that game is usually pretty serious in my opinion. Well, now they got it switched up to where it's like you go to a certain number, right? Not yeah. just so like the fourth quarter, you go to. Let's say like, because it restarts every every quarter, mm. so you go to like twenty four points, and then whoever gets first, I don't really like that. Mm. I like the one hundred and seventy eight to one hundred and sixty nine or something. Yeah, like those that. scores are ridiculous. <laughs> but like, I don't know. I mean, the Pro Bowl is just fun, dude. Because then you can get fun matchups where like players get to go to play other positions, like seeing the two Diggs brothers go at it, but on opposite sides, lock them down. Yeah, Trayvon being a, a receiver, <laughs> Stefan being a DB. Like that stuff is really just fun for me to watch as a fan. I mean, yeah. I I agree, but the thing that gets me is is the the contact thing, right? Yeah. If you're going to be in full pads, make it contact. Right. Yeah. I mean. And and if you don't want to make it contact, that's that's okay with me. I completely agree with player safety, and I mean these guys are. I mean it's their career; it's how they make money. So I completely um okay with it being no contact. But then take the equipment off, <coughs> make it something like you know, like I said, seven on seven, eleven on eleven, um, to where you know people tuning in. It's not like oh, this is a football game. You know, it's the best of the best against you know the best. So, oh, man. you know, it's going to be – That's what ruined it right there. Sean yeah, Taylor Sean laying. Taylor laying that punter out. <laughs> hey, that's Brian Mormon. He used to be my quarterback on Madden. Oh, my God. That, that's how bad the quarterbacks on the Bills used to be. I used to just – Brian Mormon, quarterback, take over J.P. Lossman, Trent Edwards spot, you know. Trent Edwards was – But, I mean, even <laughs> – This even... man was like 90 speed with like a 68, like, accuracy. So, he could sling that ball, but he could also – Mike Vick it out the corner, you know. <laughs> but see, I mean, even even after that, um, the Sean Taylor stuff, Boy. there was still good Pro Bowl games. There was, I feel like. Um, I mean, I remember watching some really good, really good games, really good competition, without seeing Sean Taylor take the dude's head off. Yeah. But <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, if you want to do player safety and you want to, you know, do touch, that's fine. But implement a set of rules. Um, like I said earlier, like a seven on seven type thing, but make it eleven on eleven to where you know you do give these um, Pro Bowl linemen and stuff, you know, their 
their recognition as well. Um, and then it makes it safe because they're playing seven on seven rules. It's not contact. Um, and they're out there having fun to where, um, you know, they don't get to do that. They don't get to go out there and play football for fun most of the time. Yeah. Well, most of the time it's, it's, Win, 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 it's win, business. win. Exactly. You know, you know they, 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 they have fun, you know, because it's a game, or at least, you know, players that are enjoying their job are having fun, but then they, it is also a business, you know, because you can, ha- you know, you can do business and have fun, but Pro Bowl is meant to be just fun. Yeah. So, see, like in the NBA and the, in baseball, the, like the All Star game is, it decides something. Like baseball, the winner of the, the All Star game gets home field advantage in the playoffs. Yeah. Basketball, I'm pretty sure it's the same way. Might be wrong. They I don't think so. It. It's not. I don't think so. What? I don't think the I don't think the All Star Game has ever meant anything except bragging rights. I could be wrong. I, I mean, it might have changed since now that they got the uh, <coughs> the captains picking teams. Oh yeah, true. I feel like before it kind of like because they used to use the the two three two format. Mm. So like, whoever won got the the two. And whoever lost got the three straight games, and then I remember that from Boston LA games. Right, I think just the downside of the Pro Bowl is that because it's such a you know heavy contact sport, people get hurt so much. I don't think he'll ever be. Yeah, I don't think uh, unless I don't think he'll ever be actually competitive again. I really don't, man. <laughs> I mean, they, they take too much, and which they need to focus on their health. I mean, it sucks. I would love to see it get changed where it is more fun. I like the skills competitions they still do though. Yep. Russell was slinging it. You know this past you know this past week and he was I mean those are fun for me to watch yeah. I always enjoyed watching the old school ones like who can throw the furthest and shit like that like they those, really need to bring that back they really do I think that'd be fun Josh and Patty got something to deal with <laughs> <laughs> they got something to deal with he that's, says yeah, that's as if there's like a beef between them no, it's a it's, beef between fan bases exactly <laughs> it's not between them they probably don't care uh, they kind of want to know no oh, well I feel like I feel like that would be pretty. Pretty entertaining. Oh, no. I, I like the skills competition. That's all fun. That's good stuff. Uh, talking about one of our Pro Bowl quarterbacks in this past weekend, Kyler Murray, man, uh, you know, unfollowed everything Arizona Cardinals on his socials, deleted all of his pictures, anything involving the Cardinals, you know, kind of indicating he wants out of Arizona. Man, this is ve- this feels very, very random. Like, this yeah. feels like it came out of nowhere. Like, I know we're not too far off from, like, a contract year sort of stuff for him, but even still, like, this feels a little – a little dramatic, in my opinion. Send a message, pay the man. Yeah, I don't know. This just feels dramatic to me. Dramatic and out of nowhere. Yeah. How you guys feeling that? You think he? You think he's gonna force his way out of Arizona? And why? Um. Tired of Cliff. Tired of these in half. You know, losing series they're having. I don't know. I I, I started watching Ballers last night. Ballers. Uh, Ballers on HBO. Man, I love that show. So, it, un. You know, not to be happy about it, but I kind of watched the whole entire first season last night. <laughs> solid, but <That's> solid. anyways, <laughs> hey, season two is up there. <laughs> but um, but you know, seeing how things, you know, of course they're theatrical, right? Um, but you know, seeing stuff between like financial advisors to agents to like the GMs and like negotiations and stuff, I can definitely tell how things could be rocky in that situation and i mean it, it could be just a ploy just to you know signify like hey if you don't give me my money or the, the, not the number i want i'm out of here i'll test for your agency was uh <laughs> season one that wasn't when he had like three teams to choose from the receiver no okay that's, that's um season two or three. that's season two because uh the only thing that confuses me about that show, and I don't know, we're completely branching off. Hey, right it's now. still football. Um, it's got the rock in there, so yeah, yeah. You know, Alex, <laughs> Alex likes it. Um, so <laughs> the thing is, is like uh, I think his name is like Jarrett, something Jarrett. Yep. Um, Dwayne, no, not Dwayne. Darian Jarrett or something like that. But anyways, he he originally played for Green Bay. He hit some dude in the face, got signed by Miami. Um, and then like after season one. Like towards the end of season one, they were going into the the season, and this was 2015. And then when season two picks up, he's being possibly cut by uh, Green Bay, Miami. Oh yeah, Miami. Ricky Jarrett. Yeah, Ricky Jarrett. So I don't know. 
But going back to the question and the whole reason why I brought up ballers is, is <laughs> because I, I do see how it it, it can kind of be iffy, especially since you have so many people kind of vouching for you and what you want. Um, it, is, it could be just a thing to where he's like, no, this is not the number I want. This is the this is the type of contract I want. If you're not gonna budge on it, I'm okay with leaving. I can see that. I can see that. What about you, Tyler? Yeah, I zoned out. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, yeah, I feel you. He's he's. I feel like. I he mean, wants, this he wants is his money. Yeah, this is just a money move. Is really all it is because it's very challenging for me to see the logic that he wants out of the out of the organization unless there's something wrong with like you'll say the GM or Cliff like he's tired of Cliff whatever because I mean the team is it's it's built you know he's got a good team got, 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 you know in my opinion the best receiver in the league there um, you got AJ Green there okay you got JJ Watt who's still you know it is sure trademark JJ Watt and gets hurt but still JJ Watt he can still go out and play you know you got Buda Baker in the back I mean you've got a good defense to help you out you got a good you know offense help you out pro bowl running back and james connor which still shocks me but okay whatever um i it, it just I, it blows me away that he would want off the team like you know like, uh, there's a lot of quarterback spots open though yeah see maybe and, he wants to go to tampa yeah, that was my first guess I, I also saw his uh his odds for that where he's like plus 500 to be the next tampa quarterback i'm like i don't know he can go to the giants which i don't know what the hell tampa's gonna do they got their star in kyle trask Hey, Come on, man. You see, lo- you see, long neck. <laughs> Stop. They they want to use him. They want to use long neck. No, they're not, they're not gonna for a quarterback. Houston needs a quarterback, man. Long neck. Davis is not they, the answer. Dude, Davis was cooking at the end of the year. Davis is not the answer, bro. Wait, what was what did Pat call him? Uh, not Davis. He called him something else. Damn, I can't remember. Davis ain't the answer, dude. Dude, Davis was cooking, man. Look at this. Look at this, look at these stats. To end of the year, 301, 3 and 0. I mean, he kind of struggled right there. But I mean, technically, he was the second best rookie quarterback on this fast draft for this season Ooh, behind he, Mac. He was cooking, I'm telling you, man. He had that one bad game against Indy in Buffalo, obviously. Obviously. But other than he that, says. hey, you take them two games away, this man threw four, four interceptions. How many TDs? Uh, 16. So, he would have been 16-4 and four without them two games. I mean, he did. 16-4 is impressive. I mean, it, with minus those two games. If, well, it, honestly, if you take away the Buffalo game, he was still he was still cooking because he only had 87 passing yards that game. I don't know. I mean, well, I will, I will say this. Davis Mills is a Lovey Smith type of guy. At, I will say that. Look at that picture, though, man. I know. Long neck, I know. Long neck. You are just – you have the biggest hey. heart on. For, I mean, I can see it from under the table hey. right now. Josh McCown should have been his, his coach, okay? It would have been my two quarterbacks in the same room, man. Is Davis Mills your second favorite quarterback in the league behind Josh? He's getting there. He's getting there. <laughs> I figured it would be Danny Dimes. That's true. You are a big Danny Dimes fan. What's wild is – I used to be a big Davis Webb fan when he was in college. Now, guess where he's at? Back with Danny Dimes in New Jersey. Yeah. It's wild. It's wild. It's wild how I don't think out. Davis Mills is going to be the answer, but, I mean, I, it makes sense that they're going to go with the default route and stick with him because they went with the default route for the coach. I mean, I did say he's going to be a superstar, so. We'll we'll follow back up with that, you know, in a year Next or two. Year. Yeah, we'll Let's see how we'll see how a reminder. Does. For yeah, next year. Go ahead and timestamp this yeah, to yeah. where, you know, he called you out on, I mean, on your bad takes. We'll call him out on, it, on, hey, the, yeah. on this one. Clip that for next year. Okay. Know. I got you. I got you. Uh, well, let's let's talk about some coaching stuff here. And we I guess we should probably start with the, the big storyline that came out last week that we kind of put off, whatever, because there was still so much coming out of it and it was still so fresh and the stuff with Brian Flores, of course. You know, gets fired from Miami. You know, everyone assumed that he was going to be a humongous coaching candidate, top of the list for everyone all throughout everything. And then it's just like, you know, each job that we're hearing that he's getting interviewed for, someone else gets hired over him, one thing after another. And now he's suing the entire NFL over their hiring practices. You know, I, I listened to a little bit of his interview with uh, Get Up, I believe is what it was. Uh, he got his two lawyers there yeah. with him. Uh, I meant to go back and listen to the rest of it. I got, I got tied up with something, but... Um, um, I mean, 
I give him complete props for what he's doing because, and he even openly admits that he understands that he's probably sacrificing his career. Because, I mean, this is one of those situations where it's like he's going to get blackballed. You know what I mean? You know, it's like you make a stance like this, you're going to get blackballed. But, like, the biggest thing that's interesting out of this is that he's claiming that, you know, Stephen Ross down in Miami was offering him 100K, yeah. you know, to lose games because they were, like, one in seven. So he was trying to get that number one overall pick. 100K to lose games. And, then, you know, obviously they went on their run, obviously. And now it kind of puts some uh, clarity on why he got fired. Um, but I mean, this situation is wild, dude. I mean, he, I mean, he does bring up some good points when it comes to, you know, you look around the league, you look around how many head coaches are, are not white. Very few. You look at owners that aren't white only, you know, sh- you know, the Con. only, yeah. Con's the only one that I can think of. It's not just, you know, just trademark Caucasian, um, you know, Packers, they don't have an owner. Don't count them obviously. So there's 31 owners in the league. Um, you know, he, he brings up good points. He does. I mean, um, all, at the end of the day, like I said, he's going to end up getting blackballed out of this, and he acknowledges that. But, you know, I give him kudos for it. You know, he's – because he, ultimately all he wants to do is he wants to bring change is all he wants to do in these hiring practices. You know, and, man, those text messages, that's tough. That's tough. Man. That, Shane, did you, did you get to read those text messages? Dude, it's, no, I didn't. Uh, dude, it's <laughs> tough. You know, he took screenshots and he showed it of text messages he got from Bill Belichick. Mind you, Brian Flores worked for Bill Belichick. He was on the New England staff before he got that Miami job. And uh, where it's like, you know, congrats on the Giants job. And Brian Flores is like, you know, did you hear something that I didn't? Whatever. And, uh, Bill, you know, Belichick was just like, you know, it's like everything that I'm hearing is like, you know, you're the guy, whatever, you know, and Brian Flores is like, well, you know, that's what I really want. I'm hoping for that. And then Flores then this responds, it's just like, coach, are you talking about Brian Dayball or Brian Flores? And then Belichick responds, he's just like, I'm sorry, I fucked up. I misread that on who I was texting. This is my fault. And he signs it off as trademarking you know, how he signs like stuff where it says like just BB at the end. And Flores is like, thanks, coach. <laughs> like, this is legit. You can look it up, bro. <laughs> yeah. uh, Flores releasing those, uh, you know, which also, you know, I did get to listen to the get up segment where he talked about the text messages, where it's just like it adds fuel to the fire of like, you know, when it comes to hiring, he's uh, Tyler's pulling the, the messages for you. Uh, when it comes to the hiring practices, right, you know, we have the Rooney rule, right? I don't know if you can read that or not. We have the Rooney rule where teams have to interview people of, you know, that, that aren't white. Minority. Yeah, minorities, exactly. You know, that's what they have to do. But it's just like the thing that, the, you know, that Brian was pointing out, that his lawyers were pointing out, it's just like, what's the point of the Rooney rule or these other things in place when it's like, if a team already knows who they're going to hire, right. you know, it's just like, you're wasting my time. You're wasting your own time, you know, doing the dinner, doing the interview and stuff. Cause it's just like, you know, for Bill Belichick to hear, you know, that it's Brian Dayball and then accidentally texting Flores. It's like, I don't, I, I think at that point, I don't think Flores even had his interview yet you know, whenever Bill Belichick sent those text messages. So it's like Bill Belichick was hearing from his from the coach's circle that the Giants had already made their pick without even finishing the interviews. So you know what I mean? It's just like, you know, they're finishing the interviews because they have to because of this rune rule. It's like, well, what's the point in that when it's just like there's all these backdoor dealings that are happening? You know what I mean? Which that happens everywhere. I mean, we know that. But, man, what a wild situation with this. See, what – what comes to my mind is this, right? Which, who is the Miami owner? Stephen Ross. Stephen Ross. So, if it's true that he offered to pay Flores to continue losing games after going 1-7, and seven, right? And obviously, Flores did not do that because they won, what, nine straight? Yep. Something like that. So, then he gets fired, which that makes sense, right? You didn't do what the owner says, you're out of there, mm-hmm. right? Because we, I mean, we even said it on the show when when he was fired. Like, what the fuck is Miami doing? Yeah, that that fire <laughs> caught everyone off guard. Like, everybody was like, "Why is he getting fired after winning nine straight games?" Not looking like he was putting things together the way that you should, and then you get fired. Well, this comes out, you're like, "Okay, well, that makes sense." But also, as an owner, even if it is Miami. You gotta think he has pull around the league, right? So what if he, what if this Stephen Ross dude is like going to other owners, like, hey, 
you know, if you need something that if you need um, your co- head coach to do something, he's not going to do it. You know, kind of being like the kind of like sleazy guy. Oh yeah, I see you what, see what, what you're saying? saying. Like going to other owners that are going to interview Brian. Exactly. I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Just to kind of like that's shady shit. I mean, <laughs> shady shit it, that it, probably happens. It could be. I yeah. mean, and in that case, that kind of sucks because if that, if I was Flores, that'd be the first thing I look at. Yep. Right. Having some trouble there with the cord. <laughs> yes, dude, it's, it's attacking my foot. <laughs> No, that, that's actually a very good point. That's something that I could see uh, happen, that he goes around kind of trashing Flores around. I don't know, man. I mean, I, I definitely agree with, with Brian's take of that, you know, things need to change because I feel like they do, man. If there's going to be all these backdoor dealings and stuff, it's like, why is it, what's the point for some interviews? But I don't know. The Bill Belichick thing, that's the tough. That's, that's tough, dude. You know, that's tough. And yeah, that also he, shows how much pull Belichick has. That's you know? Yeah, no, that's big true. He's got a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, talking about coaches still, we've got uh, pretty much every slot now is now done. All We've got all of our coaches for the league. You know, Bears, of course, with Matt Everflos. You know, Broncos hired an annual. Uh, Hackett, um, you know, the Dolphins hired. Mike Mike McDaniel, that one's uh, just popped out this week. Uh, OC from San Francisco. Johns with Brian Dayball, of course. Jaguars hiring Doug Peterson. Got to talk about that one here in a minute. Uh, Raiders with Josh McDaniels. That'll be interesting. Saints going the route that we thought they would with Dennis Allen, their D.C. Uh, Texans, do, you know, at first looking like Josh McCown was going to be the guy, and they pulled up, you know, they, they backed out of that and made their D.C. Lovey Smith, who I've got a lot of love for, their new head coach, and then the Vikings with Kevin O'Connell. You know, so for the ones that popped out this week, of course, that was Lovey, Doug, Dennis, Mike, and Kevin uh, the Doug one is very interesting to me. First off, I do love the hire. I really do. Doug was one of my favorite picks for Jacksonville coming into this season. But it to me, it really does feel like we didn't have other options. Because yeah. Doug Peterson, like I mentioned last week, Doug Peterson's first interview was like 35 days ago. We had all this news popping out, you know, the last week involving, you know, Trent, you know, wanting to get Trent fired, Brian – you know, Byron left, which was going to be the guy. But Byron's just like, I don't want to work with Trent. So it's just like, it feels like the Jags just like, well, we can't get the guy we wanted. So, hey, Doug, you want to come be the coach? Which I, I do think it's a good hire. I like Doug. I like Doug a lot, and I like Doug to work with Trevor. Uh, I also, I, I personally like the Lovey pick. I really yeah. do. I know a lot of people are shitting on it because I, I will admit, it does feel like a lazy hire. Just kind of like Manny Diaz to Miami. That was a lazy hire. Well, they um, have a lot of lot of drama happening over there. So. Yeah, they do. But, I mean, I, I don't think Lovey's a bad coach, bro. I really don't. I mean, I like the pick for Lovey. I like him being the Texans coach. I feel like, you know, he can get some pieces together, get some pieces rolling. You know, it could be, you know, good thing to watch. Now, here's something to watch for, though. The rumors that I'm seeing is that the contract is a shorter contract, right? And I'm also seeing some other rumors that Josh McCown could be hired on as the offensive staff. If that yep. happens, Lovey's going to be out quick. I'll go ahead and say it up front. He's going to be a scapegoat for Josh in a few years if that if that if that happens. Didn't Lovey say he was going to be running the plays and stuff? I don't know if he said that. I, I feel like one of them. I mean, if if he did, it would be defensive plays. But say, yeah. isn't Lovey? A, he's a defensive minded coach. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, he would he would run defense. Which you know, I got to say, you know, a lot of people look over this because of how just like bad the Texans were and all the drama. But the Texans' defense this past year, they weren't terrible. Yeah. They were terrible as overall statistics. They, I think, they were mostly like in the twenties. But like, you look at one notable area that drastically improved was takeaways. You know, takeaways from the season before, they were ranked, I think, I want to say in the 20s or so, but takeaways from this past season, they were, I think, I, I want to say a top 10 ranked team in terms of takeaways in one year of Lovey coming in being the D.C. You know, so I, I feel like Lovey can get this team rolling. You know what I mean? I feel like I like the pick personally, but that's also coming from a Bears fan. He did a lot of stuff for us. Uh, I also like uh, Mike McDaniel and Kevin O'Connell. Dill, Dennis Allen is the only one that I'm kind of iffy on. I just feel like that was a really lazy hire for the Saints, in my opinion. But I do like Mike McDaniel a lot, and I like Kevin O'Connell as well. But the one interesting thing about Kevin O'Connell, and I've got stats pulled up for this as well, because I want to make a, a little bit of an argument here. Uh, that's not the right page. That's the right page. One thing about Kevin O'Connell going to the Vikings is that is you know he really delivered in his interview and stuff that he's you know he's he's there for Kirk you know he's a big fan of Kirk Cousins he thinks Kirk can be the guy and that's the argument I want to make is that I don't under I don't fully understand all of the hatred for Kirk Cousins I really don't like I understand like he's not like he's I guess the hate lies that everyone is just expecting a Super Bowl you know which is fair you know all fans should be like that but bro you look at Kirk Cousins stats and this dude slings it man. 
Like, you, seriously, like, let's look at just this past year, okay? 4,200 yards, 33 TDs, seven interceptions, right? Uh, you know, completion percentage, 66.3. Um, I mean, season before, 4,200 yards again, 30, 35, 13 uh, when it comes to TD interceptions. Year before that, um, 3,600 yards, um, 26 TDs to six interceptions. Before that, for, uh, almost 4,300 yards, um, 30 TDs. I mean, uh, and you know, just a few years before that, he almost had five thousand yards passing. I mean, the dude slings it, man. I, I feel like I feel like Kirk can be the guy for the Vikings. I do. You know, just keep building some more pieces around him. You know, which he's already got good pieces. You know, let's let's work on that defense some more. And I feel like the Vikings can legitimately make a run if they had a good coach. Because let's be real, I'm I'm not going to blame Kirk for any Vikings problems they had. I'm going to blame Mike Zimmer. I mean, Mike Zimmer was a very average coach, and that was very clear that he was an average coach. I mean, what's your guys' take on some of these hires? How are you feeling about some? Who you hate? Who you don't like? Well, I said the same thing. Who do you hate? Who do you who do you not hate? There you go. I like the Lovey Smith hire. I like the Doug Peterson hire. I think, in my personal opinion, now Lovey Smith just kind of came out of right field. Um, I didn't really see it coming. Yeah, it did. It did. And frankly, I've always been a Lovey Smith fan. Um, but kind of bad on my part. I I didn't know he was on the Texan staff. Same to be. Uh, to be I, I think to I'm be the only frank. one here that did. But um, but you know <laughs> he's rocking a nice terrible little, show. He's, right. he's rocking a nice little beard. Yeah, he got that's that, that thing. That's that Illinois beard. Yeah, right that there. is that is the Illinois he beard. Got that thing going because he um, he had that all throughout his years at Illinois. I mean, yep. he had that beard rocking. <laughs> But, um, you know, I like the hire. I like the Doug Peterson hire. I like the Doug hire I, a lot. I really like the Vikings hire. Um, other than that, I think with the others, uh, it's just kind of like a um, wait, gotta and wait and see kind of thing. Um, I think the Josh McDaniels hire, is it, it could potentially work out. Um, you know, I think the Ra- I think Raiders, right? Yeah. If I'm not mistaken. I think that could be that could be good for them. Um, but other than that, like I said, it's kind of wait and see kind of thing. And addressing the Kirk Cousins thing, I think it kind of comes down to people don't really respect him because he doesn't win playoff games. Yeah, or like na- know, national like TV games. Yeah, he doesn't win those prime time games. Yeah, prime time. That's what I was looking for. Um, so you know, but I mean, you're right. Uh, I've always, I've always liked Kirk Cousins. I've always known that you know he's a guy that you know I. I mean, hell, I followed him at Michigan State. Yeah, yeah. You know, he was a, he was a baller at Michigan um, State. Oh yeah. He because I think he was there when Madre was there. Was he there with Madre, or Ma- was Madre after? after? And I'm I'm speaking of Madre London. Um, I think after, I might be wrong though. But you know, I and I've always been kind of a, like a Michigan Michigan State. I don't want to say fan, but I definitely follow them. Um, just, Supporter, yeah, just due to just due to family ties, just to have a team in the Big Ten, you know. Yeah, you know, because um, I'm definitely not following Ohio State. <laughs> Fuck all that noise. <laughs> Fuck Ohio State. Bro. Um, but you know, I mean, his team's Illinois, and or maybe Northwestern. I don't really have a team in the Big Ten. Hey, speaking of Northwestern, do. Uh, Joe Hyman, <laughs> Joe Hyman from PA will be their running back next year. Damn. Shout out to him. I do feel like you need a team at every conference, though. I don't have one for the Big Ten. Yeah, mine got fucked up when Nebraska went to the Big Ten. Because then I lost a Big 12 team. I'm like, "Ah, damn, man. Kansas, I guess. I don't know. (laughs) Kansas, he says. I mean, I don't know, dude. (laughs) No, I I, I was also – my Big 12 team, my supporting team was Oklahoma. Yeah. um, Or Baylor. Baylor, Uh, dude. Baylor's got some. Baylor Tigers. (laughs) That's <laughs> you, yeah, you brought it up. <laughs> I know. Um, and if anybody listening doesn't know where the fuck that joke comes from, it comes from my 24 hour stream. I was like 17 and a half hours straight into it. You're just like, oh, yeah, the Baylor Tigers. Well, I like, the Baylor Tigers. I really love them. I was like, go Tigers. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that, that didn't go right. But, um, honestly, with Cincinnati coming in, I may, I may, they may, they may be with the team. I do like Cincy, you know. So Who else is going in there with them? U- UCF. So, that, I mean, that would technically be my Big 12 team. UCF, BYU, Houston? and Houston. Yep, those are the four. BYU might be the Jimmer school right there. Oh, my God, stop. Jimmer. <laughs> stop, stop. Which is interesting because Arkansas plays BYU next year. Yeah. Facts. And Cincinnati. Yep. Man, 
<laughs> Why would that be played Houston or UCF? Tough, tough. <laughs> um, but yeah, what do you think about the dead de- ball hire? Yeah, and John, I feel like that was the. <coughs> oh, I guess you didn't say the Bears either. Yeah, I don't really like the Bears hire. I think it's a very Bears thing to do. It, no it is, dude. It, it, now, see, I, I will. I think y'all missed out. I think we did too. And but I will say this: like, while I do feel that way, and I feel like it's a very trademark Bears hire. I will say that he's they're building a hell of a staff. I will say yeah. that. I love our OC hire with Luke Getze. I'm a big fan of that hire. I am too. Um, I like that. I mean, there there are there are things that we're doing that I do like, but it, yeah, that, y'all are cooking something. The main thing that I like about Matt right now is that Matt has openly acknowledged that he's not calling defensive plays. Obviously, he's not calling offensive plays. He's a defensive guy because he openly acknowledges the one fault that Matt net, Matt. 1.0 always had where, you know, Matt was trying to do two positions at once. You know, the head coach needs to be the head coach of Thanks. the entire team. So that's the one plus that I've got on Matt right now. Matt 2.0, that is, is that he openly acknowledges that he's got to run the whole team. But I still agree with you. I'm, the hire doesn't super set well with me, but we'll see how it goes. <laughs> hey, it could turn out to be a Sean McDermott hire. So It could. I mean, yeah, you know, it could. Out of nowhere, you know. Yeah, so I don't know. I uh, Like I said, when the hire was made, it was going to come down to the staff, and I do like the staff that we're putting together, most notably Luke Getze. I do yeah. love that hire a lot. Yeah. So especially since, we, since, especially since we stole him away from Green Bay when he was basically poised to be the Green Bay OC. So I'm a big fan of that. <laughs> I'm a big fan of that. Let's go. Uh, has um, Green Bay got anybody? Yeah, they uh, who they hire as their OC. Um, it was someone from within the staff. Oh, yeah, I don't remember his exact position. Uh, maybe tight ends coach. They ain't even got a tight end. Yeah, they have a uh, big Bob, big Bob Tunyon. Oh yeah, he got hurt. That's why you probably forget about him. Yeah, he was on my fantasy team. I just that's probably why. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe he wasn't. I don't fucking know. Um, I remember seeing him though. I really like the the Denver hire. Yeah, I like Hackett. You know, yeah, Hackett was kind of w- my number one choice. Now um, you know what's gotta you get what's gotta happen after that. Yep, A Rod. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and I'm um, call it A Rod crew because oh, he's bringing some people with. Oh, him. yeah, Puzzle, he's he's gonna be bring a whole crew. Yeah, he's bringing right? the posse. He's yeah, bringing him some yeah. two receivers to go with him too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got was it, is it Scantling and Adams? Right. Yeah, yep. yeah. That's his goal. See, the thing is about these hires is like. You know, while we can like a majority of the hires, man, every hiring cycle, you're going to have those coaches that are going to be dog shit. So, which of these coaches are going to be dog shit? That's the question. Okay. There's going to be someone on this list. Let's put it out here now. Who's the first one to get fired? Lovey. God damn. I I think Lovey, unfortunately, I I think he's a scapegoat. Who Who did Miami hire? Mike McDaniel, OC from San Fran, which he you know, is a character. Which I've got to say, even if he does get fired, you know, like let's say he sucks, he's gonna have the best fucking press conferences in the world. <laughs> he is, dude. His press conferences is amazing. Man, I had to look his ass up because I was like, who the fuck have is you, this dude? <laughs> have you guys seen his opening press conference when he got hired as the OC in San Fran? Mm-hmm. He came up there, and you know, you know, obviously we've all seen pictures of him. Now he's a very scrawny dude, he's, right? He's like five six, five seven. Very scrawny. He stands up to the podium. He makes some joke. He's just like, all right, well now that I'm up here, where you know I very, very clear look so intimidating from everyone else with my physical physique. You know, he's just like, any questions? Opening questions. I mean, dude, dude is dude's a character, man. Look at him. Dude's a character, man. His press conference is going to be Go, legendary. Goes to show you, they'll hire anybody. Dude, they're going to be they're legendary. They're not hiring you because of looks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, I, you know, who do you guys think out of this, out of these coaches are going to be like the first to be fired? Who do you think is going to be dog shit? Because like I said, every hiring cycle will have them. We may like some of these hires, but there's going to be someone who's going to stink. Who's it going to be, though? I think Lovey's going to potentially be the first to get fired, and I think it's just because he's a scapegoat. I really do. I genuinely think he's a scapegoat. Unfortunately, I do too. But my thing is, like, why not just go with McCown in the first place? Right. Is it because he's not not ready, not ready, or you not? Gotta, you got to build him up. Yeah, like all he's, he's is, never been a. All coach. he's done, yeah, yeah, he is. All he's does is high school coaching. But that's it. That's the problem. Damn, that's quite the jump. High I mean, school coaching. I don't even think he's a head coach. I think he just helped. He might be a head coach. Yeah. Chad, I know Chad Morris. Yeah, the guy going from that to <laughs> NFL head coach. Like, that's wild, bro. Speaking of high school head coaches, uh, my boy Dan Connor was a high school head coach in 2016, 2017. 
Can y'all guess what his team went? Nope. One and nine. I had to look it up. I looked <laughs> no, I looked up the team and it took me to a Washington DC team and I was like, Oh and eleven. Nah, he's better than that. So I looked up what state it was in, Pennsylvania, obviously. I mean Penn State. I looked him up one and nine. I'm like, God damn, how are you even a coach? Then he went to like some college and for like linebacker. But now he's part of the Patriots staff. The Penn State? Yeah. As a defensive analyst. Oh, okay. okay. He's an analyst. He ain't even a coach, really. He's okay. just. He just crunches numbers. But anyway, back to the coaching. Um, uh, higher than fire. I think Lovey's definitely up there. Um, I think, honestly, Doug Peterson could be on a hot seat. Just because. Last minute. Yeah. yeah just because it's a last minute kind of hire. It's not necessarily who they wanted. Yeah. And honestly, I think out of. Mostly out of everybody, I mean, besides, I mean, he, he's got top end talent to deal with yeah, right a now. A lot of money as well. Yeah, a lot of money. So, Draft capital. I mean, if he goes and debunks the situation, it can very well turn ugly. I mean, especially if they start off like And that's a great point. I'm going to have to double down on that with you. I think Doug's going to be on a short leash because at the end of the day, that's not their top candidate. Oh, they got Pep as their offense Yeah, coordinator? yeah, Pep Hamilton. And then Mike McCoy behind them. They're yep. setting it up to fire him. Yeah. Oh, 100%. You get hired to get fired. Come on now. Yeah. I, I, I think Doug's going to be on a short leash, unfortunately. Because at the end of the day, we got to keep in mind, it's fucking Jacksonville. <laughs> this is a, yeah. this organization's a shit show. So uh, that's actually a good call, Shane. I think he's on a short leash, honestly. Um. Other than that, I mean, of course, I mean, being in New York or New Jersey, you're always going to be on a hot seat. Yeah, 100%. Um, so day ball. Um, unfortunately, because I, I really like, I really, really like to hire. Um, not to be kind of dumb here, but who the fuck is the Jets coach? Uh, that's uh, Bob Sala. Yeah, that's Robert Sala. He was the DC from San Fran. He was also the Baylor Tigers coach. <laughs> okay, buddy. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Hey, look uh, at look at uh look at their their office coordinator though. Is that, that Mike Kafka? That is. From Indeed. Northwestern. Indeed. Defense is Wink Martindale. I will okay. say, out of all the coach candidates, the one coach that's going to be on the longest leash by far will be the Bears, just because it's the Bears. That's how that's how they run, man. We saw how it went with Nagy. Hey, they're going to flip the script. They're going to fire him three games in. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's going to be on the longest leash, like, by far. Out of all these coaches, he will easily have the longest leash to play with. Yeah, I, I think Hackett, if he don't get – uh, Rogers, he might be a little bit short of a leash. Yeah, you're right. If he doesn't get the quarterback position down, Hackett's gonna be on a sh- on uh like a two three year run here, and he's out. And then Daniel McDaniel was just wild card. They were just like, fuck it, yeah. Yeah, we gotta hire somebody, you know? Right, right. Dabs, he's gonna be pretty decent. Uh, Doug, obviously short. McDaniel's might be. I can't. I can't really pinpoint him. Because I, I don't know the quarterback situation. Right. True. Fair. But I feel like him and Carr could do like mesh really good. Mm-hmm. Dennis Allen was just that's a, that if they don't get a quarterback done and all the money issues and stuff, I feel like because of the money issue, the Saints are going to give him a decent leash of like two to three seasons. You know, because like they they're fucked right now money wise. They are like negative eighty something million or whatever it was. Yep. Yeah, they're fucked. So I think they're going to give Dennis like a two, at least a two year window to kind of maybe fix some stuff money wise while they while they fix it like the head office. But after that, I think Dennis is like, eh, we'll see how you do. You know what I mean? See if they have they hired anybody. P. Carmichael. Uh. Nah. All right. Well, let, let's actually hop over to the big topic that we're finally getting to here. We've had a lot to talk about today, so that's fine, though. And that's the Super Bowl. How you how you boys feel about the Super Bowl right now heading into this weekend? Rams uh, are considered the away team, even though they're the home team, obviously. Um, uh, and then since he considered the home team. Uh, how you guys feeling about this game, man? Um, I think it's going to be a damn good game. I really do. I am kind of upset with the uniform choices because I saw this thing on Twitter that um, – the Bengals have this. I I don't know if it was a concept or not, but it was fucking sick. It's an all white uniform. Oh, I saw. I know what you're talking about. With orange stripes on the helmet and the and the jersey oh, yeah. looked fucking sick. And then the Rams with their black concept jerseys. Yep. That would have been dope. That's what I'm disappointed in. But 
Um, hey, at least it ain't the uh, the all. What is it? What was the the Thursday game uniforms? The color rush. The color. At least it ain't the color rush. And you Mo- most of those color rush were garbage, especially the Rams. Yeah, mustard yellow. Yeah, they were the pure yellow. <laughs> But um, overall, I'm like I said, I'm happy with the Super Bowl. I know I didn't get to talk about it last week, but um, it's one of those Super Bowls where you're gonna feel good no matter who wins. Yeah, exactly. Because like on one side, like I mean, like I will say this up front: if it wasn't for one single piece on the Rams being Stafford, I would one million percent be on the Bengals. Let let them get their first win. You know, I think that'd be super cool. Joe's fun to watch. But because Stafford is the quarterback of the Rams, I'm split 50-50 because I really want to see Stafford get his ring. But I'd also be cool with seeing since he get a trophy. The the thing is, it what kind of splits me is I don't really care who wins. Facts. But if it comes down to nitpicking and I had to pick, I'd, I would have to go Rams because of these reasons. For one, of course, and Matt. For this reason, you got to do that. And for this reason. And for this reason. <laughs> This is what I'm going with is because Matthew Stafford's in his 13th year or something like that. He's actually like there was a stat that Joe Burrow is um, the youngest quarterback to be to be drafted number one to appear in a Super Bowl, and Matthew Stafford is the oldest number one pick to appear in a Super Bowl. <laughs> That's a wild one. Yeah, no. Um, but I would, I want Matthew Stafford to get his ring um, for one, and then for two, I don't want Joe Burrow getting it right. I want him to get a ring. Don't want him getting a ring right now. Like pump the brakes. You don't want him to be another Patty. Yeah, just because. Or Russell Wilson. Yeah. Just because I don't want to hear my LSU f- friends facts talk. Oh yeah, I, you don't want to deal with that. Okay, with that, okay. Man. I'm I'm willing to wait another year or two for that. Okay, okay. So. Yeah, it's a little too soon. And also another thing for the Rams for you, you know, because I know you're such a, a big supporter of everything in the state. They do have a DB that's from UCA. Something to keep on. Yep. Robert Rochelle, I think's his name. I, I know yeah. I know it's Robert. I just know I may have Rochelle. Yeah, okay. Rochelle. Rob- so. I just didn't know if I mispronounced plus, his last name. And plus I would love to see Odell get a ring. I would love to see Von Miller get Cooper an, Cup. Uh Von Miller get another one. Yeah, true. Um Aaron Donald get Aaron one that Down- he hundred uh, percent deserves. Finally get one, yeah. Fuck Jalen so. Ramsey, but I mean he's a good player, so whatever. Hey. Hey, and honestly, low key uh Eric Weddle. That is true. The man came back just through the playoffs. This man, <laughs> this man, just sat on the couch all year. Like, yo, you want to come make a run? Yeah, that's right. He's the backup. Yeah, that 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 hurts me a he's, lot. He's the one that picked heads. Yeah, and his tails. But oh. <laughs> the only way I want the Bengals to win, just say, like Joe Burrow gets like a like. Like a a cramp or something, and fucking <laughs> Brandon Allen comes in and throws a game winning touchdown. That would Come be on, that would be that'd be so cool. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, man. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to like wish injury on yeah. anybody. So you know, a cramp out for a play. You know, oh, come oh back in, God. throw a touchdown. Hey, I'm all for it. No, I, I'm I'm split, man. Because. Uh, I don't know. Jo- Joe is electric, dude. He's electric to watch. He's an electric human being. So I mean, like, I, I would love, I would love to see it either way. Uh, it's. I will say, in terms of the game itself, I think the big deciding factor is going to be. I've said it all postseason, and it hasn't mattered up to this point. Obviously, since they're in the Super Bowl. But I'm sorry. I genuinely think it's going to one million percent matter here, and that's going to come down to Cincy's line, bro. I mean, that line, I agree. 52 sacks in the regular season, only one against the Chiefs, great job there, but nine against the Titans, okay? You're going up against the Rams with Aaron Donald and Vaughn Miller coming from two sides, bro. Like, if they got to keep Joe up, if the Bengals are going to have only a chance. Thing that, the only thing that kind of subsides me from that is later in the year and against the Chiefs, they were doing what they needed to do to get Joe Burrow the ball and get it and let him get it off quickly. That's by moving protection, rolling the pocket, and able to, you know, get him in situations to where he'll have an extra second or two to get the ball out. But the thing is, you're going against one of the toughest front seven in the league right now. And, um, I mean, Aaron Donald, Von Miller, I mean, you said it, what, two weeks ago that they – I mean, they lead the league in, in quarterback hurries and pressures and, and things like that. So yep. they're going to be all over that. And then you have Weddle and Ramsey on the backside. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. 
Yeah. What about you, Ty? How you feeling about it? I really have no dog in this fight, so to say. But I kind of do like the Bengals because a couple of years ago, you know, they Tyler Boyd connection I know. touchdown sense to the playoffs. So you know where I'm going with this because I hate I hated last year when Tampa was home team in the Super Bowl. Oh my God, you gotta get over this. I mean, if you're gonna do it, just just do it to where the the highest ranked team is home. You know, just every year. It's, I mean, it's the, if ne- where's it at, next bro? Year? It's just a coincidence. Yeah. You got to get over. Where's this. it at next year? The, you got to get the, over this. The, that's the thing. Is it is just straight coincidence. They these stadiums in these these cities, they buy the spots for the Super Bowl five years ahead of time. Yeah, like it's so far ahead of time, bro. Where is it? Okay, so we're we're good. Next year it's in Arizona. So <laughs> <laughs> we're good. He says. <laughs> Oh, man, what a shot at all Cardinals fans. I swear, I don't even know a Cardinals fan, so it's all good. I've never met one, so. <laughs> man, so, yeah, uh, Kyler Murray, he probably knew that. That's why, that's, why he, that's why he wants to leave, you know. But, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm not really, not really a fan of a home team playing in the Super Bowl. Oh, my God, you got to get past He's this. Played. Like I said, the only reason why I'm okay with it is because they do do these bids. They they built their team for this, they, so I got to respect that. They did. The Rams did. They put all the chips in for this season. Yeah. And the Bengals are not even supposed to be there. Yeah. <laughs> like, that is so true. Like, <laughs> like, no one true. thought that. <laughs> so, so, easily the Rams are going to win. Like, if you if you just look at the teams, you just take – obviously you take the, the records away. You're just like – how, is this like a regular season game? Like this is not no play, not no Super Bowl. Like who would have thought the Bengals would be there? So let's let's ride with the Bengals. You know, what I mean, Joey Joey Burrow. He's he, he was cooking something up when he's like, hey, forget offensive line. We can always get an offensive lineman. Let's go get Chase. <laughs> you know, I mean, it was definitely. The I right, mean, it works. It was I definitely mean, the right call. It Cause, worked because you can always build a line, right? But I mean. You can't get a talent like Jamar. You, especially when you played in college with him. Yeah, have that connection already. Which, I, mean, I saw this stat. Speaking of Jamar Chase, I saw this stat. He has more yards in his rookie year this year than, like, Randy Moss and Terrell Owens. Jerry Rice had it in their combined first two years. Which is wild because Randy Moss the GOAT. The, Man. Look, the looks Tyler and Alex was gave you. Bro, <laughs> we've, we've had this debate for like 10 years, years now. Yeah. Years. The, yeah. the, two ba- the two debates that I've had ongoing with him and Brady, and then one with me and Brady personally, is when, then, it, yeah. when it comes to me versus them two, it's who's the GOAT between Randy and Jerry. And then the, then the constant debate between – me and Brady is the best running back of all time. Naturally, you know, you've seen his nickname. It's Cowboy Dick Rider. He's a Cowboys fan, so he's hard set on Emmett Smith. And me being a Bears fan, you would think that naturally I'd say Walter Payton. Nope. No, I actually say Barry Sanders is the best running back of all time. No cap. Yep. And it is a constant fight with with those two arguments with these guys. I mean, it, it go, to me, it goes Moss. No. Terrell Owens, no, <laughs> and then Stop. Jerry Rice, no, See, bro. To, to me, I think I think you got kind of open up here a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, if we're gonna talk about this receiver wise, you get you got to look at it this way. Uh, Marvin Harrison's got to be in there. Isaac Chris Bruce, Carter, Isaac Bruce, um, the other the Larry Fit, Larry Fitz. Who was the dude that played on the other side of Isaac? I forgot. Tory, Tory, Tory Holt, Tory Holt, um, To. I mean, there's look at that. Look at that. Stop. You top in best wide receiver Stop. all time. The first one pops up, Randy Moss. Stop. He's not the, he's not the I mean, guy. I even forgot about Michael Irvin. I mean, there. Calvin Johnson. Calvin Johnson, which yeah. honestly would be my, probably be my pick on just raw talent and being able to do the things that he was able to do on the field. Um, Andre Johnson, you know, he got the best hands. But, I mean, and, and, and as far as running back, I mean, I think – if I was to pick somebody right now, it would probably be Barry Sanders. Um, Brady. But the thing is, like... Jim Brown was pretty solid, though. And what's impressive with Barry is that, I mean, he did it and he retired early. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but, I mean, you also got to add in there. I mean, you got Walter Payton. You got... Jim um, Brown. Jim Brown. I mean... LT. L- yeah, LaDainian Tomlinson, which, which 
was the only reason why I watched the fucking Chargers AP. back in the day, the day. Yeah, Adrian Peterson too. You gotta give him yeah. some love. Yeah. So I mean, it, it's it's definitely a wide thing. The way the way I kind of scale players is Gale Sayers. Yeah, Gail Sayers is a great running back. Man. Rip. Oh. Um. The 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 thing is is you, you the way I kind of scale players is. Um, accolades as far as awards. So, like, you know, your play of the year is your, your Pro Bowls, your Rookie of the Year is your Super Bowl rings, all that. And then, um, you know, your stats, of course. And then on top of that is just an eye test, right? Right. And I think that's one thing, like, when it comes to basketball, why I have LeBron James as my GOAT is because of what he's able to do on the on the court, Right. I mean, this man is six eight, and doing the things that he's able to do in in the type of league that we're in right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and the same way, going back to football, I mean, Calvin Johnson, that that he was literally, and even like now with DK Met- Metcalf, like if you would have shown somebody DK Metcalf fifteen years ago, they'd been like, that guy is a lab experiment. Right. Yeah. He is a Madden creation. Yeah, yeah, a Madden character. So I mean, the things that these people are able to do just by a strict eye test and their talent has got to be has got to be some kind of scale um, when when talking about you know greatest of all times. So right, all that's all good points. It's all good points. But going back to the Super Bowl, um, I think the Rams is what a four point favorite. Yeah, minus four right now. Uh, money line, 198, uh, plus 166 for Cincinnati on the money line. Over, under right now, 48.5. We got Super Bowl favorites here as well. Um, I'm, I don't know. How, I mean, this game, I, I think the bottom line is I think this game is going to be a very good game. And that, and that's what that's ultimately what I want. You know, I, I want a game that's going to be competitive throughout the entire game. You know, last year's obviously blowouts stink to watch unless you're a fan of the team that's dominating. You know what I mean? Other than that, they they stink to watch. Yeah. You know, obviously that Patriots Rams was a snooze fest, and even though it was like it was electric to watch, I mean the you know the the second half Patriots Falcons in my opinion stunk because it's like one half of pure dominance and then another half of pure dominance from another team, yeah. and it's like let's get competitive throughout the whole game. You know what I mean? Because I mean, let's be real. While yes, that comeback was unbelievable to watch. Uh, that se- that second half was boring because yeah. it you know the first half was boring unless you had it unless you were really pulling for the Falcons. You know, it was a boring first half because it was one team dominating. So at the very least, I think this game will be very competitive throughout the whole thing, which is ultimately what all I want out of it. Um, just some other kind of Super Bowl topics that you boys were throwing in the chat this week. Which like your best and worst memory from a previous Super Bowl? Um, my <laughs> least favorite. Um, I've got a couple. I do uh, too. Of yeah. course, I really didn't like the Broncos. <laughs> yeah, getting um, dog walked. Bron- <laughs> yeah, getting absolutely murdered. Um, I don't like. I'm not a big fan of the you know the big big Ben to Holmes in the corner end zone. Oh yeah, really one of the cards there. Yeah, I did too. Um, that's when I was a big cards fan because I've always been a kind of a Kurt Warner fan, and of course Larry Fitz. I think he's another guy that deserves a ring. Um, yeah. I don't know if he'll go ring chasing. No. Um, he'll probably retire as a Cardinal without a ring. But he'll go down as one of the possible greatest of all times and Hall of Famer. Um, and then, of course, Marshawn on the one. Why didn't you do it? I know. That's probably one that hurts me the most. I especially, know. like, recent anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, And then my favorite moments... Um, I I would definitely have to say New England getting beat by the Tyree catch. Yep, pretty much. Facts. Yep. Um, that's definitely one of my favorites. Eli um, Eli escaping was pretty. That sad. whole yeah, play, yeah, that whole play is just insane. I still rewatch that play every once in a while, yeah. and it's just insane to watch. Um, and actually, you'll be a fan of this one. Um, Bears Super Bowl first play of the game, first kick off the game. Devin, Devin Hester takes it, takes it back for six. See, every, for That's every one of my favorites, every Super Bowl for me, I can just turn on the game, watch the kickoff, and as long as it doesn't come back for a touchdown, I can turn off the game and call it a successful night. <laughs> yeah, <yep. laughs> so that way, Devin stays on a pedestal as the greatest returner of all time. Man, he needs to be a Hall of Famer. Uh, I agree. You know, first ballot. Um. And there's there's some more, but those those are definitely the ones that are up there, and I'm sure that that <coughs> matches with a lot of people. It does. Um, just I mean, especially like uh, you know, 
people or adults in our age group. I mean, that's really kind of what we grew up on or, or those kind of moments. Right. Uh, and I mean, of course, I mean, you can go back to, you know, later and the Bills, you know, losing four Super Bowls. But, Sorry, Tyler. You know. Hey, Frank Frank tried his best, okay? <laughs> hey, Don Beebe, though. That man, he chased them down. Mm-hmm. Um, And then, of course, I mean – you know, things that we've seen through history, you know. Yeah, yeah. That one guy getting tackled on the one-yard line. Dyson. Yeah. So, I mean, that was tough. I mean, there, there's definitely some moments out there and that, you know, the Super Bowl brings. Yeah. Um, just because of the caliber of the game. Um, so, I mean, it's it, – and I def, I, I will I will say this. I think this game, uh, this Sunday, will have one of those moments. I think it will, too. Uh, every Super Bowl – for the most part, feels like it has those moments. There's a, some that don't, but like every Super Bowl almost has like that defining moment kind of thing. Um, I know for me, for best moments, and I'll I'll, I'll name this first one because I, I think it's funny since you already point out this game was uh, the start of the Seahawks Broncos game because I was hard pulling for the Seahawks in that game. So the moment that the Broncos' very first play goes back for a safety and set the tone. It was a phenomenal moment for me because at that Super Bowl, Jeez, I, I that. was at a party with a diehard Broncos fan who, li- who who once upon a time lived in Colorado. So for that whole game of me just being able to roast him the entire time, it's fantastic. See, that was, that was that, that's it was, that Super Bowl was tough for me because of course those are you like my, both like teams, my both teams. Um, and I've been a fan of Denver longer, and I've been a fan of Peyton Manning even longer than right, that. Yeah. Um, I didn't really didn't start Naturally. paying. I didn't really start paying attention to the Seahawks until like Sean Alexander era. Mm-hmm. Um, that's when I really liked them with Hasselbeck. Yep, Hasselbeck. Yep. Um, we got we to drive down the score. Yep, yep, yep. But it so that one was kind of tough. I was actually cheering for the Broncos um, in that Super Bowl. Um, but until I, after the first play. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but. I mean, that game was the epitome of I don't care who wins. Right. Um, but I knew Peyton Manning was getting older. Um, and I really didn't know Russell Wilson at that point. Like, I didn't know what kind mm. of player he was. So, I mean, that was insane. And the Legion of Boom at that time was – Unbelievable. I mean, it, it can, they can literally go down as one of the best defenses of all time. And, so. and they need to be considered that way. Uh, and was I'm also going to – Was that the year that uh, he said, you're going to try me with a sorry receiver? Yep. Or yep. was that the next no, year? No, it was the same year. Same year. Okay. Uh, and then I'm also going to have a double down as most – pretty much anyone who watched this game live will agree with. That entire play of Eli escaping and David Tyree making the catch was one Man. of the most electric things I've ever seen in my life of football. Yeah. I mean, that was unreal. Uh, in terms of, like, another really exciting moment wasn't a particular play, but it's like it coming to a close – for the Ravens 49ers and just knowing that Ray is going to walk away with a ring and yeah. he should have walked away Ed getting a ring as well Ed should have walked away but obviously then he went to the Texans and I think the Jets completely as if no one everyone forgot that he was even there right. Ed, Ed should have walked away with Ray but it was cool to see those two Miami goats uh, get rings but in terms of painful um, the the Seahawks Patriots will forever stick out to me yeah I, the amount of heartbreak that I felt in that moment, and even though the, you know, I, the Seahawks is our team that I've always enjoyed, I consider them a top five team, but like that moment still absolutely shatters me. It really does. But my number one most painful memory by far was the Packers winning the Super Bowl. And I've actually got a funny story about that. Because um, that entire day, I felt great, right? Did some cooking, me and my boy, you know, Brady hanging out, going to watch Super Bowl. I cook, you know, we cooked, cooked a lot, a lot of good grub and shit. Felt good all game long, even though the Packers were winning, whatever. I'm not shitting you the moment that the game came to a close and confetti started to fall. My exact words to Brady is, man, I don't feel too good. You know, I started feeling sick. No shit right after the game. I got the fucking flu. Boy. <laughs> I'm not I miss school like the whole week. At, you can ask Brady, dude. And Brady has always said since, I have never seen hatred for a team so strong as Alex for the Packers, like when he got sick when the Packers won the Super Bowl. And and you're talking about the one with uh when they beat the Steelers. Beat the Steelers. Yeah. That was one of my favorite moments. Yeah, same. I know. Because I'm not a I'm not uh I'm not particularly a fan of the Steelers and of course I like the Packers. Um especially like because that was coming in, you know, Brett Favre was still kind of lingering around and, you know, the whole thing with is Aaron Rodgers going to be that next guy kind of yeah. thing was still kind of there. So for him to go there, 
his first time and only time now. Um, and to win it, and especially to beat a team like the Steelers, because I'm pretty sure they still had like Heinz Ward and, and no, not and not that. Hans. No, it was a. Uh, no, or was it Antonio at that time? Was he? Was no, he Antonio was before? on that squad. I don't remember who their main receivers were on that eleven team. That is. A is good that one. like Mike Wallace? I think that was when like Mike Wallace was there, probably. Because uh, I mean that uh, they may have had like Emmanuel Sanders as well, uh, like Emmanuel Sanders, Mike Wallace. Uh, Rashard Mendenhall, I think, was the running back, if I remember correctly. Oh, they had Charlie Batch on their team. Yeah, Rashard Mendenhall was the running back. Yeah, yeah. And then they had – oh, no, they had Antonio. Oh, Antonio. Okay. He, That's he what only I had uh, – Was he a rookie, I guess? Yeah, because he only had um, – damn, where's it at? There was this – there we go. Also, I want to give a special shout-out to that onside kick coming out of the second half. For the Saints and the oh, Colts, yeah. electric. That was uh, electric. An, another one of my moments that I did not like watching the Saints win the Super Bowl. I loved it. I, I loved mean, it. I loved what it did for that city and and like for the time that was going on with Katrina and everything, to where it kind of it kind of lightened the blow. But as far as like football reasons, I was one hundred percent going with the Colts the entire time and sit there and watch Peyton Manning throw that pick. That, the, the Tracy Porter. Yes, that literally broke. <laughs> I, I remember being. I, I remember being. I don't know how old I was, but I remember nearly breaking down in tears when he threw that pick. Like I, I can, <laughs> I can remember him, him coming back, and as soon as he throws it, I'm, I'm sitting here watching it happen. I'm like, that's an interception. He's gone, and then as soon as that goes through my head, I hear the announcers. It's intercepted, and he's te- you know, and he turns the other way. I just remember falling like all out of my chair, just like closing my eyes because I did not want to watch the rest of that game. Um, but that that I mean, but I mean that's that's kind of what we live for as football fans, right? Yeah, it is. Um, the good and the bad moments. Um, you know, the the good moments are super highs, and the bad moments are su- super super lows. Oh yeah. So I think that's one thing that makes football great. So I'm definitely looking forward to what Sunday can bring. What you got pulled up, Tyler? Oh, uh, talking about the only the the main guy I remember from that team. Or it was he's he played for Arkansas State, right? David Johnson, Arkansas yeah. State. He was yeah. like a tight end, tight end fullback. Yep, yeah. didn't do nothing, but I mean, he was on the team. He was there. That's yeah. all that matter. So I was, I was like, man, I really want him to do good, but fuck the Steelers, you know? Right. I had a couple of Steelers fans in my my class because that was our senior year, mm-hmm. so I had to go back to school and. Listen to them if the uh, if the Steelers would have won, but at the time, my best friend he was a Packers fan, and I hung out with them every day. So right. I was like, "You got your one, boy. Maybe Buffalo can do something nope. eventually." Nope. <laughs> hey, what's some of you guys' uh, go to Super Bowl foods and snacks and shit? You guys have got any signatures that you always run with? Uh, Buffalo chicken dip, bro. Me too. Oh. I, I have a fire ass recipe with some uh, uh, uh brats. Let me look at the brats. Up. I I don't do brats. You don't do brats. The Johnsonville brats. No, nope. it. re- nah, it's no. not Johnson. It's not Johnson. I refuse to do brats, bro. It's, uh, damn, what are they called? Brats are no go for me. See, I I I typically. Oh yeah, it is Johnsonville. These right here, boy. Yeah, that's the goats right here. Yeah, it is. Queso. Nope. And then you got. No, oh, that's Italian sausage. Okay, hold on. We gotta go back. We gotta go back. But, um, Tyler, ever since um. That Super Bowl party at my house, where Tony and Pierre and yep. you and everybody was at my house, and uh, I cooked all that food and stuff. And um, I, th- I think you, yeah, you and Stephanie were together, and y'all brought that buffalo dip. Ever since Boy. then, I make it every year. Boy. Every buffalo year. dip is fire, bro. That shit is so good. Buffalo <laughs> dip, and uh, I have my homemade queso, bro. Both hey, of those are my this, go-tos. This firecracker brought, it's good. But that firecracker, it gets you. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Dude, I took about two bites, and I'm like, man, that shit is good. And then I, I go to breathe, and I'm like, holy shit. I'm but, like, uh, is this about, cr- is this about to, crying? Is this about to be a food show again like it was yeah, last I, week? I literally <laughs> listened to, like, the <laughs> – Did you guys, enjoy our 20-minute food talk? <laughs> I, I, shit, I, I shit, forgot shit, to ask you. I shit you not. I'm sitting here – because uh, I, I was listening to the show on my computer, right, on YouTube. 
um, as I always do, because I'm, I'm trying to push that a little bit more with our YouTube. And I, I know we get views on Spotify and all of our other stuff, but I'm really trying to push the, the Spark E3 YouTube out there and oh, yeah. get it more views, get it more likes. Because um, honestly, not I'm not ashamed. That's where the money is um, with sponsorships, and that's what everybody looks at. So I was listening to that on YouTube on my computer while doing – my player rankings and my mock draft. <laughs> I shit you not. Like, I mean, at times, like, I would stop doing my draft and I would, like, listen to what y'all were talking about and stuff so where I knew what fuck was going on this week. Right. Um, I honestly forgot I was listening to the same. I, I, <laughs> I, I, legit, I, le- I legit thought that it went to another episode. <laughs> that I haven't heard before. Like I thought it was. Like, I thought it was from an episode that I didn't like Man. before I was even here. <laughs> and then I I like clicked over to YouTube because I was like, oh well, shit. Maybe did I listen to the whole episode? And I was like, <laughs> nope. Still got fucking thirty minutes left in the show. <laughs> I'll tell you, man. I can talk about some food. Dude, yeah, we spent like 25 no, minutes like, talking about food. And, and what cracked me up the most is like three or four times Alex was like, all right, guys, we got to end the show. It's been an hour and a half. We got to go. And then, and, and then Tyler goes, well, what about this food? I'll yeah. tell you, man. Hey, I can talk about some damn food. Bro. And bro, I was just trying to wrap know, it up. Another 20, minutes go, another 20 minutes goes by, and Alex is like, okay, guys, we're going to wrap it up. We're going to call it here. And then I, and Tyler's like, "Oh wait, what about this?" It's like, bro, <laughs> boy, I have you seen? Totally have you seen lost. the Taco Bell burger? I have not. Uh, okay. I, that's an abomination. Just like how the Taco Bell wings are okay. an abomination. You're about to see this. You, you like it's, Sloppy Joes? No, because this is Sloppy what Joes like. are disgusting. Oh shit! I clicked on an accident. God damn it! The Hold Bell on. Beefer. That's what it's that's, called. That it looks looked like disgusting. a Sloppy Joe. It's disgusting. That looks disgusting. I guarantee the, look, it's nasty. <clears throat> I'll put it this way. I, uh, you know, I worked at Tamales Mexican Kitchen. Uh, uh, I kind of hate. Quote the Mexican part. You know. It's it's Tex-Mex. Yeah. Um, now, I hate to kind of shout them out. Um, but anyways, um, the yeah. last, like, year I was there, they came out with a special. It was called the Taco Burger. And it was low-key kind of fire. So oh, yeah. honestly, so, no, I'm I'm, I'm being is good. <laughs> I'm being dead ass. That shit was so good. Like it was. I, hate I mean, both it, of you. it definitely wasn't like a top thing on the menu, but it was super underrated. Why am I friends with you guys? Um, but so for that reason, I think I would try it out. Now, the only thing that kind of would discourage me is like the lettuce and cheese and that, like that. <laughs> no, that's all tamale. So yeah, but yeah. I mean, it was no. it was good. No, uh, it was actually um, okay. Okay, talking about some bad food real quick. I gotta got cut you off real quick. Okay, we was living together, right? CJ was there. Yep. Bro, one night I think y'all was y'all was at work or something. Me and CJ was just sitting there. We're like, man, kind of want some tacos. So my dumbass already opens the Velveeta, well, not the Velveeta, the uh, the nacho taco shells, and then we look in the fridge. There's no fucking meat. And I'm like, damn, man, we already opened these. I don't want to put them back. So our our great genius self, you can ask CJ about this if you want to. We're like, you know what? We got some dogs in here. No. Bro. And I had some cheese dip. No. Some. Boy, you want to talk about <laughs> wanting to throw up. Boy, I took one bite, and I said, I said, why are we like this, man? Dude. It was it was a cre- it was a creation. It's not the worst thing, but I stopped eating hot dogs for a little bit after that, and tacos. Yeah, I went back to hamburger helper. So talking about burgers coming from like uh, like a Mexican place, whatever. Um, I found this very very strange. So you guys know Mr. Beast Burger, right? Mm-hmm. The only location that we have near us comes out of a fucking on the border, and I saw really? that. Yeah. The on the border up there, uh, close to Best Buy and shit, man. In Little Rock, in like West yeah. Little Rock, yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's that's the closest Mr. Beast Burger, and it's coming out of on the border, and that sketches me how, out. How is that man. even a thing? That sketches me because I, I want to try Mr. Beast Burger so damn bad. It looks phenomenal. I'm, it really I'm, does. I'm a big burger guy, and they look yeah. so good, but that is so sketchy to me. Especially like the I forgot who it is, but like the inside out grilled cheese. That yeah, it looks fire. 
Bro, oh God, but that that's weird to me, bro. But on the border, honestly, low key, I kind of I, I would be down to make a trip, um, just to go to like Dallas or something, and just fucking just try that. I'm I'm being dead ass. Yeah, I'll make a weekend trip just to go down to Dallas or wherever that closest be Mr. Beast Burger is, right. just to eat that. And we I would literally eat it all weekend. I will say, you know, if you ever want to make a trip for a dope ass burger, especially since um. I think July, it's either late Ju- late June or July. Tim the Tap Man is doing his tailgate, and it's in our uh, it's in Arlington. No, it's in Frisco. Okay. So th- I, I'm going to it, and that would be so dope to go to. Right. And we'll stop by some Mr. Beast Burger. Ah, uh, dude, I want to try Mr. Beast Burger. So now, well, um, March fifth. Sacramento comes to Dallas if you want to go to a basketball game. Yo, you know, low key, I have been hitting up, like seeing it, like tickets and stuff for like any Memphis games. Let's let's look at the tickets for these. Yeah, I, yeah, I just, I'm not gonna lie, I did look at the. Uh, yeah, I've I've looked at some Memphis tickets okay. out of curiosity. So I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't really give a fuck where we would be. So twenty dollars for a ticket. That's like not too bad, man. Not I won't, too bad, bro. I've only been to one NBA honestly, game in my life, and I had the fucking suite, and I don't know if I can downgrade. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well we can go, we can scroll down a little bit because company paid for it, bro. Company paid for it. <laughs> Hold up, man. Where are we at? Three the, tickets. The thing is with NBA <laughs> games, you always have those rich fuckers that never like they'll buy their tickets but never come to games. So like literally in the third quarter, you just go down and like sit on the court. <laughs> yeah, man. Damn, that's way up. That's on the. Yeah, I ain't it's trying. To, ra- I ain't trying. It's to on not, the rafters. I'm not trying to do all that. Right, right. See, I like these row A's because. I'm not very – I don't fall, so to say, <laughs> but I am clumsy and I am scared of heights. <laughs> so if the only time I will look at one of these, like, upper decks is if I'm talking, like, the first three or four rows. After that, I'm good, dog. I ain't trying to – because I had a bad experience where I felt like I was going to fall off of the, <laughs> the arena because I'm sitting like this, you know, all to – uh, yeah, yeah. Verizon Simmons, Simmons. That's what it's now. Simmons. You know how the very top of it is, is like you're damn near climbing up like a ladder. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. That that was scary. That was for an Arkansas game, like in two thousand something, right. eight, twelve, um, eleven, nine. What are we? What are we time stamped at right now? Uh, yeah, we're at one forty. We probably need to hit our picks, boys. Okay. And also, uh, the you want to talk about Super Bowl MVP odds real quick? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We'll hit that because it's part of our pick. So we, I do have like the the top Super Bowl picks. I mean, obviously, you can keep going deeper, but uh, so coming going in, deep. Yeah, going deep. Uh, coming in number one, we do have Stafford plus one twenty, uh, Burrow plus two thirty, Cup um, plus five fifty, Donald plus sixteen hundred, Chase plus twenty five hundred, OBJ plus twenty five hundred, Acres plus three thousand, Higgins plus six thousand. Uh, I may have mixed up some numbers here from the looks of it. Uh, Mixon at plus 4,000. And then uh, the last one that I stopped at since he was a previous Super Bowl MVP, I wanted to include him, Vaughn Miller at plus 4,000. So. I'm not going to lie to you. I seen Miller and I didn't know who the hell it was. Yeah, Vaughn. I was, uh, I was Come thinking on. like Lamar Miller or something. Come I'm like, on, who the, bro. Hell, what the hell? Lamar Miller, the running back. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, here. I'm going to hit some music while we make some of these picks. Pick a color. What colors we got? Orange, yellow, green, teal, blue, purple, pink. Um, for Bengals, let's go orange. <clears throat> bang, bang. Good song. Came in really loud. All right. So, just a, just a tad. What do we, look, where, where do we, where do we want to start? Do we want to go ahead and call our, our pick for the game or do we want to hit some betting stuff first? Let's do, let's do betting and then picks okay. last this time. All right. What about Super Bowl MVP? Um, so I'm going to do one for each team. Okay. That's fair. Just because I, that's I, fair. I, I, that way yeah. it keeps a mystery about who your team's going to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> So with, um, unfortunately, I am going to go both quarterbacks on on this. So for, riding chalk. Yep, uh, I feel yep, you on that. yep. I'm just riding the numbers here. Um, so Bengals, I'm going with Joe Burrow. Rams, I'm going to go Matthew Stafford. Okay. What about you, Tyler? Uh, I'm not going to go that route because he went that route. So I'm going to go Matty Stafford because he deserves it over anybody on this list. But I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go Jamar Chase. Because this man has been on fire here lately. so I'm actually going to throw a bigger curveball from you guys. Cam Akers. Uh, so, for the Bengals, I'm just going to go the default route of Burrow. Burrow will be the reason they win that game up front. Oh, that's, 100%. That's 100%. Not the offensive line. But if the Rams are going to win, I'm going to hammer 
plus 1600 Aaron Donald getting the MVP. I can see it. Yeah, that's that's what I'm going to rock with there. Um, all right, so now we're going to get into the more betting that is going to kind of indicate where we're kind of leaning on stuff. So for the spreads, the Rams are currently minus four and a half versus the uh, versus the Bengals. How are you guys feeling on that? What are you going to bet on? Because, you know, you could obviously just bet the Bengals here if you even think the Rams are going to win, you know. I'm going to go I'm gonna go plus four. I'm, I'll take the Bengals plus four. Okay. Same. Plus yeah. four. Because it's going to end on a field goal anyway. Evan McPherson. Yep. Yeah. Shooter. Right. Now, now we're which, in. Which, given that that's literally the – I literally heard Tony Romo say that. He literally kicked the game-winning field goal, and Tony Romo was like, Shooter McPherson. I was like, that, that gotta, that's got to be his nickname. True. <laughs> got to be i'm also going to hit the hit the plus and i also went with the blue color for the rams there we go we're rocking both super bowl team colors here for our music uh over under is currently 48 and a half how you feeling on that over under at 48 and a half yeah i'm gonna say over uh seeing as it's gonna end 24 to 21 i'm gonna say under yeah now watch it be 34 31. That, that, i mean that would be what 44 <laughs> is what 48 yep i'm gonna say under and then lastly, uh, just our pick for the game, which could also, in betting terms, just be the money line. You know, depending on if you want to take the money line, because that's just calling out who's going to win, essentially. Uh, minus 198 or plus 166 for the Rams at the minus, Cincinnati at the plus. Who you guys got, got winning the game? Like, what's your what's your pick here? This is tough. Are, we doing, are we doing scores? Yeah, you know, it's, it's a Super Bowl. Let's do scores. Okay. Right. Well, I already got my score out, so. Yeah. So, I, I just want to ask. Right. Um... <laughs> I am going to go Rams. Um, I'm going to say 30-27. No, 31-28. Rams 31-28. Not bad. And Tyler, what was your score? 24-21. And that's calling for the Bengals? Indeed it is. Who's the announcers for this game? Couldn't tell you. That is a good. Probably who it is every fucking (sighs) Super Bowl. This is tough, bro. I really don't know. Watch Vernon Quist be there. Oh, it's the in is NBC. Yeah. Guess what that means. Hold up. Mm. Oh God, I'm so split on this damn game, bro. Like, I really am. I don't know who's gonna win. I don't know for some reason, bro. My gut is just telling me that that the Bengals are gonna win. My gut is just telling hey. me this. The analyst announcer is Chris Collinsworth. Of okay. course. Who played oh, for the Bengals. Oh, my God. Who played for the Bengals. <sighs> my gut is telling me it's going to be the Bengals, bro. I'm going to rock with the Bengals. And for score prediction, I'm also going to change my betting here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go over because for I'm, I feel like a 28-24 could be the score. Yeah. I'm going to rock with that. Yeah, I don't know, man. Something about the Bengals are just they're, – they're sticking out to me, bro. They really are. I don't know. McPherson's got to get him some. Yeah, I'm fine with either team winning, but I, I am a little partial to wanting the Rams to win because Stafford's yeah. so old. I want him to get a ring. But Damn, I just, that's a nice, hurtful thing to say. Dude, Look. he is. Let's be real. <laughs> he, I, it, you know, since Tom's retired, I mean, uh, Stafford's the second uh, – no, he's the third oldest quarterback in the league, right? Yeah. Out of the starters, because it's it's Aaron and then I think Matt. Yeah, Aaron, Matt, and then Matt, Matt Ryan, and then Matt Stafford. In terms of starters, yeah. listen, I think I'm I'm with Tyler here. Now, if this happens, I'm from the fucking future. I think it is going to come down to Shooter McPherson, but I think he misses the field goal to tie the game. Wow, what <laughs> what what an electric moment that would be. Bro, with how insane he's been Damn. this playoffs, I think uh, I don't see how. I think he misses. It's gonna be. I'm gonna call this right now. It's gonna be a 49 yarder from the left. What is he right footed? It's gonna yeah. be from the opposite hash from what his foot is. So it's a little bit harder right. of a kick. 49 yarder opposite hash from him. He's gonna miss it. Damn. See, I was thinking he's gonna hit like a 52 yarder to win it. See, with my score prediction. I think uh, I think it's going to be a 24-21 game, and since he's going to get the go-ahead touchdown to win it instead of okay, not a walk-off win. I, yeah, because it would be 27-24. Well, yeah, that's what I meant. 27. Yeah, 
That, that that's how I see it playing. Well, Unless they just well, send them out there to kick the extra points just to be. I mean, dicks, they, you know? they no, they typically will do it, even if it's like. Well, I mean, well, maybe not the Super Bowl, <laughs> but typically they do <clears throat> let you kick the extra point. Yeah, I mean, I see it being 20, 28, 24 because I feel like the game is going to come down to the like, you know final seconds for the Rams to try to get something they're I just mean, not going to. I mean, that's just. I, the I norm. think I think it's going to be 21, uh, 24, 21, and since he's going to get a TD and go up to twenty eight, twenty four, and then since he's going to finish it off there. You know, hold hold down on defensive side. I feel that it's gonna be a good game, though. I'm excited. And I watch it be like 55 to three. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> I mean, at that point, like, I, I, I'm turning the game off well before we get to the, the end of the game. Watch watch it be like the the Rams and uh, the Patriots. What was the the big high scoring game? The Rams and uh, Chiefs. Chiefs. Why would it be like a score like that? Oh, that'd be insane! That Monday night game. Yep. That was that, that game was absolutely unbelievable. Well, I would definitely take that loss on the end. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, hey. bros. Let's let's wrap this up because I'm hungry. Same. Yeah. We talked about food again. We made a mistake. You door dashing or something? I don't know. I may go get something. I haven't been to the grocery store yet. That's that's part of my problem here. So, I mean, you only got nine hundred things in your let's deep not, freeze. Let's not talk about the deep freeze. <laughs> <laughs> don't talk about the deep I freeze. Talk, what about you? What's for dinner? Uh, I have no idea, but I did have a Velveeta cheeseburger mac little heat up microwave thingy, and that shit is fucking fire. Okay, so. I haven't eaten today. So what? How, what are you feeling? Um. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go keep it classic. I'm I'm gonna I'm preparing myself for Sunday. I'm gonna so, go ch- chili dogs and and uh, ruffles. There you go. Getting so, ready for the game. That sounds so fucking good. It does, yeah. Chili yeah. dogs are good, bro. Get hungry. All right. Uh, well, if you made it all the way to the end, we appreciate you, especially since this is a longer show. Hopefully, the Super Bowl is going to be absolutely phenomenal. Hopefully, it won't be a snooze fest. Hopefully, there will be good commercials. Uh, there are some commercials that I am looking Half-time forward to. Halftime show is going to be lit. Halftime show will be pretty dope. There's going to be some good commercials throughout the show. I think there's going to be some commercials uh, for some Marvel stuff, so I'm pretty excited for that. I don't know exactly what was going to be there, but there's I want to say there's something Marvel that's going to be there, so that's pretty dope. Uh, also, also be on the lookout for the GTA 6 trailer during halftime. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm uh, being dead ass. Uh, make sure to go check us out at our website, sparky3.com, as well as our merch store, sparky3shop.com. Uh, join the Discord. We'd appreciate that. Follow us on Twitter at TerribleFB Show. Check out the other shows, Game Static, MM Plus, and talk about movies and stuff. Uh, with that said, we appreciate the hell of you for listening to A, a terrible, terrible Football, football show. show. See you next time. Don't make sure